Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than this. The podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. In the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need an end. It ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. What did we tell you, brother? Ravishing Randy Hogan here, NWA WCW star, and I'm coming at you from the Can Crushers, baby. Number one podcast in the whole world, brother. Let me tell you, old school stories, not the same info, not the same questions. Coming at you on a regular basis. And what you going to do when Can Crushers and Randomania run wild on you, brother? Hello! Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. A little bit of a break last week. We enjoyed the 4th of July weekend. Jenks and I did. To Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. I'm Mark the Mark. That's Sir Michael Jenks. Uh, I'm buzzing right now. <laughs> but it's a tease. I can't just... This is what's happening! Mark's being a tease right now. He's also buzzing on water. Let's get off of that. This is exciting things to oh, come. Yeah. He's not buzzing off of any alcohol tonight. He's being a good boy. He's got a lot going on. He's got a shit ton going on. Uh, but yeah, it's welcome everybody. But it's right in my wheelhouse. What's going this on? This is everything exactly. It's right in your wheelhouse. Nothing new. But you invite this time, kind of stuff. So <laughs> been, but you do. It's I you. mean, you love it though. That's what I meant. I will you bitch that I'm tired on Thursday. You w- Friday, guys, mark our calendars. When we record next Friday, the f- release it Saturday, Mark will be bitching about how tired he is in that episode for sure. But it'll be inter- it'll be fun to hear everything that goes down. So with that being said, how are you? What you got going on? <laughs> I really am glorious. Uh, first and foremost, I hope everybody had an amazing 4th of July, 4th of July weekend. Prior to and prior after. Yep. Not prior after. Jesus, this is why I don't do cue cards. I think you might need the alcohol to just get through whatever you're saying. Maybe we can segment two. I'll have a beer with you tonight. But uh-huh. I hope everybody had a great uh, 4th of July and everything like that. It was kind of too impromptu. Hey, we're going to take a break. Um, yeah. Things came up, but it, it fit. It didn't fit for the pay-per-view, but we're going to cover it today. And then, yeah, we'll just rock and roll from there on out, just the way that we do this. So let's start off baby steps, okay? And then we'll get to my week. Yeah. This is episode 483, as you're listening right now. 483, which means episode 500 is around the corner. The, final, the, countdown. the, the final, countdown. final countdown. The final countdown. Yeah, not the we worst. Cannot, we can't afford that. We cannot afford that. <laughs> 500 is right around the corner. That's pretty awesome. I've figured it out. Okay. And they're going to be like, well, you skipped a day. We did, but it's already planned in. Barring anything crazy in our lives. Okay. And that mm-hmm. could happen. As of right now, September 16th is going to be episode 500 and as we get closer don't do it now my god i don't want my phone to ring for the next <laughs> two months and a half <laughs> there'll be people that do it though this week i know there will be we want to hear and you have to keep it under three minutes and you have to keep it one time uh i hate to be that guy because i, I feel that we're gonna get i feel that we're gonna get a lot yeah just from reaching out already I feel that we're going to get a lot. So if I see somebody with six (laughs) times that they called or 13 times that they call, I'm going to, I just have to delete it because there's going to be other ones. Yeah. 
please, you have three minutes to call in the hotline number, and we'll give it to you later. Da, 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 you know all that shit. We want to hear your favorite memories. If you're talent, um, I'm going to pander. You know, tell us how you love being on the show or congratulate us, anything like that to get the 500. We really want to make 500 a big show. And I'm not going to play them until we're on the air. So I'm not going to say, hey, Jenks, this one's from Bob's, our best friend, Bob ben. Smith. <laughs> I'm not going to know who they're from. So I'm going to play them just as we're on the air. I'll drop and drag, throw them all on a desktop, and then boom, this one's from whoever. Yeah. We, we want to make this as much about us as about you because you yeah. can crush your nation has been along with this ride for five, 500 fucking episodes. Yeah. It's five been... years ago on the back of a garbage truck, the wife didn't think I was going to get to 12, which is an odd number to think of, but <laughs> it, it happens, right? 500 is right around the corner, throwing the spotlights, throwing everything. It's, it's literally as recording two months away. It's wild to think of. And can crushers, the listeners, the main reason you're, we're getting to 500 episodes. I can't underline that enough. Like Mark said, without you guys, it probably would have ended at 12, maybe 15, <laughs> right. you know, <laughs> or Mark would have made it to 69 and said, this is where I end it. Just right. Try to be a legend at that point. But Oh, man, for the two years I've been a part of this ride, which that happens two weeks after I've been on here for two right? years. I, I was going to save yes. that for a congratulations, and, but we'll do it anyway. Yeah, we'll spoil it now, but it's freaking wild how much it's grown, how much I loved listening to it beforehand when I joined being a part of it. But, God, we'll save all that for the 16th. Unreal. Of September. We've got, of September. It's unreal that we've gotten – close to 500 and now we're ticking down the clock for the actual 500th episode yeah <sighs> it's yeah. wild so that kind of just gives me talking with you about it right now just kind of give me a little bit of chills because that's that's really cool um yeah. i could probably get emotional but we'll save that for september as well and there will be big to do's on our end <laughs> probably drinking heavily so. <laughs> there will be bottles cracked popped Chugs. Oh, man. I, I have to look that up right now. Well, oh. thank God you guys know that we record prior. Okay. Yeah. You know that it will be the 16th, but we'll record on the 15th. 15th. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. How, how heavily can I drink? Uh -oh. oh, I can drink heavily. Oh, you, is it not a pick game? <laughs> okay. <laughs> West Virginia. And I did not get West Virginia tickets this year. I did not get in quick enough, apparently, to get uh, West Virginia tickets. So. That'll well, be not, I, you know what I gotta I gotta figure out how sloshed I'm getting this weekend. Give me a second here, because if this is Pumpkin Fest weekend, I'm gonna have a long weekend ahead of me. If it's Pumpkin <laughs> Fest weekend, I'm coming up. I love that idea. Let me let me see if I can find something on that over the next couple of weeks. I'll try to find something on that because it's nothing on the site right now. I couldn't imagine. It's fucking July. Why would they, they do? They do announce it two months out to kind of get to start getting people building up for it and being all that, but all right. I digress. Okay. Let's go on. I digress. Do you want, okay. So 500 right around the corner. We're already super excited about that. Where do you want to go next? Because I, we, we have two, two more pretty cool announcements. We really do. And then we'll get to our week because we have to give the listeners what they want. <sighs> This is a difficult choice. It really is. If, I'm it's gonna... one, if it's one, I have to get the read ready. If it's the other one, we'll mark you know, out for a while. <clears throat> let's mark out for a while, and we'll give you time to get the read ready. <laughs> Touche. So let, how about you do it then? Go ahead. <clears throat> I, I would, after these two years, I'd like you to finally make an announcement. <laughs> I'm an asshole. Put me on the spot now. Now I'm blanking. What is it? The big one? Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. Are you really kidding me? You forgot already? Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, my God. Whisper it again. 
I I don't hold on. Just by the way, this is what happens when you put me on a spot. Oh, that one. Got it. See, guys, this is what happens when I already forget about things. I've been drinking heavily since earlier this afternoon, so leave me be. Were you off but, today? Uh, I had the afternoon off. Nah. So. Legally? <laughs> yes, legally. We're not going there. Yeah, we're not going there. Anyways, so for some reason, not for some reason, because we're amazing and awesome podcast that's nearing 500 episodes, we have made our debut on IMDb. What? And every single episode is listed out there on IMDb. I don't have the words for this right now. Done. I have no idea. Like, this came to this, my attention I was probably say, yeah. Wednesday when I was doing something. Yeah, and when you said it to me, he, Mark told me before this podcast, this is probably why half the reason why I kind of like still in shock about it. I had to look it up and it's here. Can Crushers wrestling podcast, 2018 podcast series. It's listed. It's on IMDb, 482 episodes out there right now. It's unreal. Every single episode, we just have to add plots to them that are out there right now, but we need an intern. We need an intern to do that, first of all. That's a lot of plots. (laughs) But we're hitting the big time. IMDB. That's really cool. Like, that's... Well, and here's the thing. I would never have guessed podcast would make it on there, let alone us. You can't... A a wrestling... A wrestling wrestling podcast. in general. Yeah. I... It's out there. I don't know what to say. Like, so we have to remember when we're saying we're available on. Did it? Uh, we have to say. We have to. We have to say we're available. We're also live on. <laughs> IMDb. Fucking IMDb. I mean, fuck. I. The only other West wrestling podcast that I know of that's out here is Busted Open on IMDb. It's, it, but that's legitimate. Bubba Ray, Mark Henry, it's David serious Kratka. radio. It's serious ra- radio. Yeah, exactly. So, but we're out there, baby. We're baby. out there, baby. In the other big announcement, because you brought up Busted Open, which is, listen, they're they're amazing. Uh, I, I love listening to those guys, yada, yada, yada. We can give them all their to-dos as well. But... We also got picked up by Podurama. And people are like, what is that? Podurama is a streaming podcast network. It is synced, okay? And these are all the cliff notes that I have to tell you guys about. Because I've been working with somebody at Podurama once they said, hey, we want you on as well. Cool. Let's let's do some work. Okay, so I did some work. If you go to our website, you'll see that we're now listed there. You click on the button, list, and it'll bring you right to Podrama. It'll be in our show notes and stuff like that. But this podcasting network is seamless between iOS, Android, desktop, laptops. Essentially, if you're listening to it in your car, you pause it to get back into your house, and you turn on the laptop and you want to listen throughout the house, this, that, and the other thing, Wherever you paused it and you want to listen to it on your laptop, we'll pick right back up from there. It, it just – and I'm not knocking the other ones. This is a great platform, especially like Spotify and everything that we are on. But normally you have to restart on Spotify yeah. or iTunes or yeah. any place like this. This, of course, as of right now, if you sign up, you'll get 50% off. There's a link in the show notes. There's a link on – our website, all of that. So go to that. Right now, they're offering you 50% off when you sign up for the premium lifetime edition that you'll be there. And the caveat to all of us working with can crushers is once again, we are now going to be linked right to Busted Open, JR, Jericho, Stone Cold, the big ones where, and I am not one 
to knock anybody that has a podcast. It, it is a battle. It is we've had other people for podcasts on. We work together. That's the way that we both are. Yep. I don't want to say we're separating because it, it sounds like I'm being egotistical. I'm not. We're separating <laughs> from it's the a, people that get it, five listens a week. It's a unique opportunity for yeah, us to thank you for being a fucking wordsmith. You're welcome. It comes with work at a corporate job. It's a unique opportunity where we're able to grow even more and reach more people out there. This is fucking fantastic. This is just an awesome like 482 episodes ago. Did you ever picture being linked to Busted Open? Did you ever think to being linked to JR? <laughs> Let alone 69, but you did it. Oh man, but it's fantastic. It it's amazing. I pulled up the page. It it's beautiful. Everything looks good. It comes right up. It's, if you and don't the have the thing is, it has them numbered for us, so I'll never have to count how many. Or I could I on DVD because it tells you now too. That's but true. It, it numbers how many are on there, and it, it's so cool. Yeah, it is amazing, and. Well, now here's a dilemma for you. There's only 481 on this site, so today this one would be 482. Well, because IMDb, and I, I'll tell you this, I had to uh, two, three years ago, I had to delete one of uh, somebody's second that came on because she completely gave away storylines and everything. And somebody, the promoter, came and said, um. Yeah, got Even it. You erase that one. So that <laughs> is one to us, though. That's the downfall. Like if you have it, you have it. Yeah, I can't and... delete. You know, air quotes delete it because it's still on our page. So what you're also hearing is that it's a mythical podcast that doesn't exist anymore, and it's a rare, rare find. Yeah, just hold on to that. But fair enough. Yeah, it's all out here. Everything. I can't believe it. This is, we're moving up in the world. Yeah. So IMDb, Podorama, again, it, right now, to continue to, you know, IMDb, I don't know, they're working with us, but they didn't even ask. Podorama at least, you know, reached out and said, hey, we'll do this. So check out their logo, check it out on the website, sign up now. And you they're going to be sending me offers all the time. But right now, it's 50% off of the premium lifetime to join this network. <laughs> And pat our stuff on the back one more time. We're linked with the big boys. So let's fucking go, Mark and Jenks. <laughs> How was your week? Well, now that you've completely diverted off of what your week was, um, my week's been good. You want me to go first? No, I'll go. I'm just being a smart ass at this point. Uh, I had to say something, you know, I divert from me being old and forgetting what the fuck I need to talk about today. But um, it's uh, it's been a good two weeks. I survived puppy mania that ran wild throughout this house for brother eight days, nine days. Brother, it was a lot of leg like drops. 50, though. It was something else, that's for sure. 50 is a good number to put on it. There was a lot of elbow drops, a lot of cross bodies off couches from dogs. Uh Overall, everybody had a good one. Bailey and I both slept all day Sunday after the pup left, so we enjoyed that time of peace. But no, it was fun having the pup around. Um, so you guys missed that craziness for the last podcast because we had to shift things around, but it's all good. Uh, outside of that, it's been a good week. You know, just hanging around the house, going to work. Did Habitat for Humanity a little bit yesterday, so did a little bit of volunteering work, so that was fun. Uh, so that's been the overall week. I hung some gutters, siding, oh. did some drywall, oh. took shit down. It was a lot of fun. Um, helped the family. The, the uh, father, the husband of the family, was there. He came over from, I believe it was Congo, in Africa. Uh, six kids. Plus his wife, they're moving into this lovely house. Um, honestly, it looks better than my house inside, and it's only got drywalls on the studs right now. So I'm kind of jealous of what he's got. But it, JK, he's a he's a pretty nice dude. Um, 
he was there helping us out. We were doing all, all kinds of stuff for him and that. So it was pretty, pretty nice to do something, build something for someone else to give in the back. community, give back a little bit in the community and that. So I'm like, I'm fortunate enough that I can do it through work. You know, a bunch of us could go and do it for them. And it helps build some team camaraderie on our side, but it also helps us do some good for the uh, homeowner that's going to be moving in there. So I'm hoping we get to go to the dedication ceremony so I can see him and his family get to go in there and uh, enjoy their new home and that. So, but it was, it was a good day yesterday. They'll have it all painted up and everything, right? Or they're going to say, here's your house. You can paint it the way you want or what? Yeah. So for Habitat and for Humanity, the homeowner, whoever's receiving the home has to put in what they call sweat equity. And we were talking to the guy and it's about 300 hours. So he has to go in and do, he could get friends to do like half of that for him, like 150 hours, but he has to put in at least the 150 to 300 hours um, in the home himself. So he can say, let's paint it this color. Let's do it this color. Um, I'm not sure how the end results usually work, but when we were there yesterday, they did say that, they were coming up around, they're thinking about September, October time frame for everything to be completed, and which was makes sense. Most of the drywall was up downstairs. Upstairs, we got, I think, most of the rooms done. The bathroom was still being drywalled in and all that. So they're pretty much coming along. We did miss mudding, which I'm totally oh, fine with. Bummer. <laughs> I, I was hearing horror stories while we were there about the mudding of drywall. So, But it was a fun time. It was a good opportunity. It was fun. I enjoyed it and had a lot of good time. I'm sore as hell, but it was all good. Yeah. It's so much fun to break drywall because it breaks so easy, but it's oh, heavy yeah. as hell. Oh, it's heavy as fuck. Like, yeah. I was trying to lift it. I was also trying not to be my normal bare self where I accidentally <laughs> break things. Because I swear I could walk up. I've been around drywall before and I just touched it and it broke. So it's like you have to be very careful with it. Just kind of do what you can with it. You should have seen me yesterday. I had my leg up underneath it, trying to push it up with my I hands. I guys would see this right now because he's demonstrating it's, it. It was all fucking things. I wasn't even screwing it in. Somebody else was screwing it in. Somebody else was on the other side, but I was trying to get it to keep it level. It was a whole fucking thing. It was so many yoga poses that I never want to do again to do that. But Downward janks downward jank's gonna fall and that's been about it so it, it was a fun time that's cool yeah it was cool so that's been my week was there anything else no i don't think so so yeah that's been my week how about you how's your week uh, uh work-wise it's been work it's nothing 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 yeah. um but it, my prior to today as you guys are listening Leading up for the next five, possibly six days weather, um, I will have 14 Legion games within those days as listening Saturday and Sunday. Eight games right then and there, four each day. Uh, I, I guess this has been thrown onto me, which I'm super excited about. Uh, official score, which means I have to do the official score book. Yeah. Um, Thus, pitch counts are very necessity, so I have to do that. I have to do the announcing. Game day, so music and any other announcements going on. It's it's a whole pile. And then, via uh, a meeting last night, Skype meeting with everybody, since I'm the official scorer, and this is the one that I'm like, oh, no. Oh, this could be, this could be bad. I picked the all team, the all tourney team. Myself, because I'm the official scorer. <laughs> that has, God forbid, anybody listening to this. You should be at baseball practice right now, kids. <laughs> listening to this right now. Some of you are playing right now. Yeah, some of you Don't are playing right now. Play. You're not allowed to have phones in the dugout. What the hell are you doing? I, I, I just, I'm very diplomatic. You know this. Yeah. So, yeah, I have to pick nine because that's a team. Well, yeah. There, there's eight teams. So do I pick one from each team and then the overall, like, MVP from essentially the winning team gets two? 
I mean, I have to go by stats. Stat, I you mean, have that, to. I, I completely agree. You go by stats, but again, but you. I, I think it's a dick move to leave. It's I, an all-star team. Yeah. Why can't there be one representative from every team? Yeah. Well, just like baseball. MLB yeah. Baseball. Yeah. One representative from every team. Like, that's the only way you can really do it. Like, if you end up doing it by whoever has the best stats, you're loading up with whoever's in the semis in the finals. I'm sorry. Two teams are going 0-2. Yeah. And I hate to say it like that, but two teams are eliminated Sunday. It. I I digress. You, you know, like I don't want to say I'm I know. Gonna pick anybody from those two teams to go 0 2. Why not? They could lose 10 to 6, and one guy could have all six RBIs. Why wouldn't he make the team? Well, yeah, exactly. And I was going to, that's exactly what I was going to say. Even on those two games, they lose both of them, even by a substantial amount. There's got to, there's going to be one kid that's probably three for four, both games, right? Knocking them in. You know what I mean? He did an outstanding job, so he should get some credit for it. So that, that has been my thoughts. That is where the anxiety driven. I'm like, man, this is, that's not my calling. That's, I, that's because every kid, listen, it's a region eight. It's essentially, if people in Arkansas are listening, that's half of Pennsylvania coming to this tournament this weekend in little town that I'm at. So I'm like, holy moly, I, I have to pick I, that's And that's that's my thoughts it is really one from each team. Winning team gets two. Yeah. I think that makes most sense. So that that's it. Uh, I'm super excited, though. You're right. You said it at the beginning of the show. I put myself into this. I, I'm ready to go over right now. And it's 647 at night. Uh, I'm ready to go over right now and start doing everything. But. Um, I should get some family time in. Right. Well, yeah, you, you're going to have like five. <laughs> you only got five days to not have family time. So you might want to get that six days. Yeah. To start Saturday. Yeah. Something like that. Six or seven. But I know you're excited. I know you're pumped. I said it earlier. You did this to yourself, but you did this to yourself because you love this. I did not do it to myself, though. I remember when I was in New Jersey and I didn't go to the meeting because I almost died yet again. And I got voted on to it. Yes, but you love it. I do. Love that's it. what I meant. That's what I was getting at. You love it so much that you're gonna, like you said, you would go over there right now. Besides family time and the, recording the podcast, you'd go over there right now and just go up, go ape shit and get everything ready for the. I'd go ham for the weekend. I really, yeah, I have to. I, I guess there's gonna be like four or five people underneath me and delegation is gonna be like did you get that pitch count did you did you get that i don't want that song right now i'm gonna be chris norris all over <laughs> yes that's what this that's what this tournament needed was a director of entertainment to drive them home that's, it. that's all it is i'm gonna be traveling now next year when it's back up you know in, in meadville so to speak yeah like you know, you know the guy on the board in St. Mary's? Yeah, call him. He'll run it, you know, tight ship down there. He'll run tight ship. Get him up here. Let him run it. Let him run this. <laughs> so now I'll be on the Pennsylvania board. Yeah. Hey, look at you moving on up. Podcast-wise and in the Legion Baseball. Me and the Jeffersons moving up from the east side. Deluxe finally, apartment. You finally got a piece of that pie. Besides all that hot takes. We have to jump back, and then we'll get to wrestling really, 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 because I don't have any hot takes besides Fight Forever. Last episode, you heard us. We were playing. We had Doggy Mania going on. It was awesome. Fight Forever is getting his first patch. And let me say this, because two weeks ago, I still love the game. I've done my 100. I've done 150 matches now. I got the notification, King of Hearts, da 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 Never showed up in my in my shop. Really? So there there's a patch glitch. Some people have got it. Some people haven't. Did you make it to 100 yet? I haven't made it to 100 yet, but I was more excited that I can now play with the Internet on. So that was my because they had to do the emergency patch to fix that for the PS4. If you guys remember, I had to turn off the Internet on my PS4 so I could at least play Fight Forever. 
and then they finally fixed that. So now I can I don't have to toggle the internet off between games and figure out what I need to do and all that. So which also lets me uh enjoy some new features that are coming out, but we'll get there when we're gonna get there. But yeah, I never I didn't realize that that pat that was going on, that issue was going on for the King of Hearts. Yeah. Oh, so man. that really that tear in my eye. I got the reward, whatever ten thousand dollars for, you know, the hundred things. And I'm like, well, maybe because I did a couple death matches or whatever. No, it came right up and I'm like, okay, I can go to the shop and get it. And I I can't. That's part of my patch issue. And I apparently this patch issue is gonna fix a, a few things that some people got it, some people didn't. So whatever. I still love the fucking game. I still play it probably yeah. when I get a second uh, the last week and a half. I might have got maybe five matches in total, but I love it. Um, ja- January, July 25th, the next DLC comes out as you'll get the bunny and Keith Lee still the oddest pairing of people. Why, why, would get, bunny. why wouldn't you get <laughs> bunny and blade or bunny and the butcher <laughs> Or give us three wrestlers. Give us all, the whole bunny demon thing, you know, Butcher Blade yeah. and Bunny. bunny. <sighs> Whatever. I don't care. It, is it Butcher that's in the band? Because I was trying to make a I joke so, that yeah. it, it, because of his he, he's, he can't be in it because of his band. But I was trying to make it funny with that. But don't worry about it. I already ruined the joke. But it, it, I, I don't know. I don't get it. But, hey, I think they just were like, okay, whoever we can get completed first. You're in the first patch. You're in the second one. Da 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 down the line. Because with FTR, it was a whole. It's coming out gay, day of game. Yeah. Matt, broken Matt Hardy too. They weren't even going to be in it. They and weren't then, even oh, going to be in are. it because of the up fucking evil that a lot of us can crushers included had about it. They were like, oh, "We got you guys. Don't worry about it. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming." They still so, can't come out as a tag team unless you create them as a them. tag team. <laughs> Which, which was the oddest thing. I could not play them for the tag team titles for the first week. I don't know why. And then they finally let me do it, and I could beat, I beat the Young Bucks for the tag titles. But it was the oddest fucking thing. I don't know. August 22nd, we get the next DLC. It's Hookhausen, essentially. Listen, the first two DLCs, really, they're going to be on the game. Yeah. Maybe Ricky Starks won't be my whipping boy anymore maybe it will be dan house like, that is the one complaint i have about the one of the complaint the one complaint i have about this game they did ricky stark's dirty in this did. fucking game he looks abysmal like nothing against ricky starks i love him they just did him dirty in this game i don't know character design wise but the big news that we're all waiting for and it broke on our little sabbatical Stadium Stampede, online, 30 people riding fucking horses and bulls and tanks and battle royale. It's essentially Fortnite. I'm going to suck at this, but that's all I'm going to do. Oh, 100 hundred percent you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try to find the horse to fucking ride the whole time that's exactly. what i'm gonna do with everybody couldn't I'm give a shit about the on the horse yeah yeah exactly everybody i'm hoping that's an achievement everybody rides the fucking horse and say i bought Saturday. the horse already in the shop you can buy those oh yeah yeah i did buy yeah yep yeah i got the horse i'm excited for it but i know listen we talk about that have like 150 matches under that's been since the game came out. There's kids that have played 150 matches day one. one. There's we're going to get throttled on it. All we want to oh, do yeah. is hope that we end up in the same network or yeah. whatever. Same they call connection. It. Yeah. Yeah. If we can get same some battle. of us guys in the same one, just to do a mockery, probably die in the first two or three people. Oh. I'm riding the fucking horse. That's all that matters. We're gonna do the Spider-Man meme, and then we're just gonna run out and try to destroy, destroy ourselves in three seconds or less. But it'll be fun as hell. It. I'm not a big online guy. I guess Neither am I. Yeah. But this, this looks like it, it could be. It, it could be something. It's worth a f- fucking try. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Give it a couple and, tries. And if and I that, ever win it, probably game will get uh, platinum. And put on the wall. 
Make sure you buy a nice frame for that. No dollar store one. No dollar store. Oh, God, that's, that's an expensive one because all these ones are nice. I don't care what you say. I love my frames, by the way, asshole. They're all the same frame, at least. I was not making a joke about your frames. I was just saying. Oh, okay. For that game, and for the platinum the status. I, well, Jesus Christ. Somebody's defensive about his frame. I was only joking about because you won the game, you have to put it in a nice frame. Gee, oh, wow, you. man, coming after me. Listen, I know I've got IMDb earlier, but God bless America. Don't don't come out, don't come for me, bro. Yeah, I had to write that down on a piece of paper. He was so excited when I told him prior to the show. He's like, I forgot. We had a lot. To, we one talked announcement it. in two years. First of all, this is why I don't make announcements. Apparently, also, we had talked about a lot more after the IMDb thing. So we did. We did. You, you know, it, it happens. It happens. We did. We need to talk about more wrestling, though. We do. Uh, did you see the band moves list from AEW? I did. Is it because Warner Brothers? That's what I... Hot and heavy now with Warner Brothers. I think Warner Brothers is definitely putting in the next day. I think the seizure spot, seizure spot that Danielson did catapulted this to yeah. fruition in the past week or something like that. Because now we have to be very, this is very much a board of directors type decision. The needs approval list, I think, is interesting more than the band moves list. The band moves list, I think, makes sense. Right. For the most part. But the needs approval list is what's kind of throwing me off here. There's a couple of things where it's like, that's what you need to ask for. One of the one that sticks out, the high risk dives, top rope moves, the 450s, the 630s, shooting star presses. That's that's, that's Pac. That's Pac. Now, and, instantly, and we'll get to it when we get to it, but clearly a main component of your whole roster. Buster, yeah. Anytime he's there, he's a main component. Pac. That's entirely Darby. Darby. Penta, the Lucha Bros. Commander, who you've been showcasing on a weekly basis, whatever show it ends up on, by Kingo when he comes on. Those are all guys that do these spots. So, do they? In the worldly guys, they're not saying this wrong, but you guys, Can Crusher, understands. So, hopefully, IMDb does as well. It's not your homegrown talent, it's the people that are grabbing people overseas, Japan, down south, and all like that. They're yep. like, oh, I'm going to watch AEW because Viking goes on it. Exactly. You're taking his moveset away. You lose Mexico. Do you, So to me, do those guys get an automatic, I know you're going to do this, so you can have our automatic blessing type thing? So, like, you have a Vikingo who's not technically on the AEW roster, I don't believe. So, he could be, yeah, he's pretty much is. But, like, Commander, like, Lucha Bros. Let's go Lucha Bros. We know you guys are going to do flippy shit. You're going to jump. You're going to do a lot of fun, fantastic moves. And even Pac in that Death Triangle. That's the whole Death Triangle. Which I don't even know if it's a thing after this, but we'll get into that later. Um but do they get a universal pass where you say, you guys are approved, just don't overdo it type it, thing? I think it's that, and I think it's – I don't want to say it's going to be watered down, but their band, and I put air quotes around that band, what's their punishment if they do it? It's If it's going to bring viewership to Warner Brothers Discovery – but they do a 960 off of the top rope, and I don't even know how many times that is. So figure that out for next week. I don't care. You don't have to. That's but, hurting my head right now. But yeah, no. you do a 960 off the top rope, and it's the number one trending thing in the world. Are they going to get punished? Because that's just so much. I think that's why you see those as the needing approval ones instead of the banned ones, because it's. Yeah. That's what's drawing in your audience is those special moves. You guys, there's people out there. Born at, well, you mentioned more that, uh, it, Yeah, yeah. But we that complain about the 
flippy shit, the way people do things, the no sells, whatnot. But that's what draws people into the product as something different than WWE. You can argue that right, wrong, and different. But in my estimation, it's not seen in WWE because they don't have those boundaries. Well, they didn't have those boundaries put into place. AEW let them get it through with a lot. But now when you're dealing with a corporation that owns you, you see these restrictions, you start seeing stockholders' money starts talking more than it, the board of directors starts talking more than whatever you want to do. That's the will of the people. Uh, we're we're going to stick with flippy shit here for a minute. If you're going to have, and we're going to stay with the Lucha Bros because they do both essentially. Yeah. So if they're doing flippy shit and, and we're not knocking it, it's just the best way that we describe it. They're doing the flippy shit. Okay. They've done the flippy shit for 20 freaking years. Now they do it. And I understand it. One false move. Da, 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 something can happen. They at least have practiced and they know the movement in air. If something goes wrong, they can maybe catch themselves. What you're going to see this Wednesday on blood and guts is a completely different, like it's a one-off match per year. Yeah. Own off of cages and balconies and da, 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 da. Shouldn't that, and please don't bring this up. Warner brothers. If you're listening right now, pause and then come back next week. Don't take that off the air. I would be more worried about them saying, okay, you can't have blood and guts on normal TV anymore. It has to be a pay-per-view. view which I wouldn't argue with whatsoever no, because no. I always think I th- always thought that was the pay-per-view style match, like a yeah. pay-per-view match. Um, and you could easily work it in. I mean, Anarchy and Arena and Double or Nothing, All In, All Out, whichever one's in Chicago, perfect blood and guts. Play right. with the cage aspect of it. Yeah, but if you guys, it's interesting timing with this to your point. This is a blood mess next week especially with the elite versus bcc the history of Pac and omega moxley and omega moxley and page the young bucks and every member of that crew you know there's so much bad blood that's been built into this history it's probably the most anticipated blood and guts i think coming up yes so and the fact that we're getting the elite in blood and guts, something we were promised in 2000, but had to step away from because of COVID. So it's now they're not going to stop Moxley from bleeding. Bleed, Moxley's bleeding within the first five seconds. He's going to get out there. He's going to get exactly. He's going to bang his head off the wall, off the cage wall, like Goldberg does on a door and start bleeding before he gets in there. People are going to get hit with kendo sticks, hammers, Somebody's going to get stabbed with a screwdriver. We know that's the case. These are all, but I think this is also why these are on the needing approval list. Right. Because now that saves the blood and guts type match where, well, this is things they have to do for the sake of the story. So we have to let them do it. Have to approve it. We have to approve it so that they could do it. Aerosol spray still gets me on this list. That means Brandon Cutler cannot <laughs> be out there fired. with the fucking cold spray. He's he fired. cannot. He's fired if he goes out there with cold spray. <laughs> Rick Martel could never come. Precious could never come. <laughs> no Not. arrogance, perfume, what cologne? Nothing. No. Uh, terrible. All right, but, that's our big stuff. Again, Podorama IMDb in episode five hundred. Hey, I remember that this time. Yeah. <laughs> Collar and elbow, hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and Hooligans have. I'm not even worried, waiting on a shipping anymore, Al. That you, you've lost my trust, essentially, <laughs> if you're listening. Head over there, and if you buy something, you'll get it faster than we're getting our shirt. Use the promo code CANCRUSHERS, all one word, capital C and CAN, capital C and CRUSHERS. You'll save 10%. All right. We are. Socially available, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Threads. Oh, we're on Threads now. See, I didn't even know that. He he, he sprung that one on I'm me. Just dab- yeah, play right. I don't know we're if it's anything dabble. yet. I don't know if it's anything yet. I've put a, a couple things out there. I've heard. I got a shit ton uh, of followers on the first day. 
I've heard a lot of great things about Threads. I haven't even started a Threads. I thought about it, but I'm like... It's a PG Twitter right now. Let's we'll leave it at that. Yeah. And well, not, nothing against it. It's probably a good thing, because Twitter's just a cesspool of just disgusting human beings anyways. So... <laughs> <laughs> You can also reach us by email. Which is scancrusher69 at gmail.com. And if you want to listen to us, we are available on... Podurama. For 50% off if you click on our website. We're also on Google Podcasts, Apple, Spotify, wherever you can get those lovely podcasts. IMDb, IMDb now. We're everywhere, guys. We... We're... We might as well have stars up our asses at this point. So we're everywhere. We can fill your ear holes wherever you decide to go to. Here comes Al to tell you more about Collar and Elbow. We come back. We'll get into Money in the Bank since we didn't cover it. What's happened in two weeks in WWE and transition from there. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. This is the hardcore icon, Just Incredible, and you're listening to Can Crusher's podcast. Now, that's not just the coolest, and that's not just the best Can Crusher's podcast. Well, that, my friends, is Just Incredible. Incredible. Welcome back to Can Crushers, ladies and gentlemen. Mark the Mark, Sir Michael Jenks. We're ready to dive into college football real quick. Because yeah, we're... yeah. What's wrestling? <laughs> First and foremost, have you had the Southern Tears Mango? No. I... What's it? Wait, what's it called? I don't. I just threw the can away so you could see what the beer looks like. Oh, the beer looks delicious. It's Mango Southern Tier. Okay. okay. All right. This came when we went to the banana ball game. Okay. And I had a mango out at a bar out there that was like Golden Rail Mango or something like that. Mango Rays. What? I just looked it up. It says Mango Rays. Oh, for Southern Tier? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So we couldn't find that one around our area, but my lovely wife said, hey, we just got this into the store. Do you want to try this? As everybody knows, it's listened to Can Crushers since day one, day one-ish. Um, I've been a Southern Tier fan. They have mango now. It has crushed the, the Golden Rail one or whatever. And you know, I was telling you, they were cheap that day during the hot dog eating oh, contest. Yeah. Prior to the hot dog eating contest. And I'm like, I'm just going to stay here and not go to the game. Well, that didn't go over well with the wife. But they were only four bucks. So that was unbelievable. And weren't, weren't they 16 ounces? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable price. And they were delicious. She found the mango, the, the Southern Tier Mango Race. Rays. Rays. Like mango Tampa Bay Rays. Rays. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> this is delicious. Delicious. The downfall is I probably just shut a Miller Light tonight and then shut it off. I'm ready for number two. And I just you had a sip so far. You mean like my hat's sake right there? No, that's MGD. Well, close Miller enough. Fight. It's Miller. It's Miller. It's Miller time somewhere. It, it really is. We'll get the wrestling. I promise. I promise. We have a lot to cover. So strap in. You're only an episode two. We were talking about college football and our nonsense when we took a break real quick. There's an off day in October for Pitt. Like it's their bye week. Remember when we were going to win the $20 billion and we were, both me and you were going to get a bus and ride around, which we yeah. still could because their tickets are available for this uh, tonight. Yeah, or, tonight's you know, it's up to a billion, gajillion. Yeah, uh, we can still do that. 
October 9th, October 2nd. I don't know the exact date, but I was playing Purdue. Once I told her, Kelly, she's my wife and she has a name, <laughs> about the tradition that Iowa does. Oh, the waving. She's ready to go to Iowa. Ten hours away. You know, we could leave on a Friday, watch the game Saturday, come home a Sunday. Yeah. Big little getaway for us. Still nice weather. So, yeah. I don't know what's Iowa. How cold to get out there in October? I can't imagine. Yeah, it's the different. same. It's probably the same as here it's in football weather. Yeah. yeah, it's football weather. It's probably fall weather, rain, maybe some rain, fifties. Be, be an Iowa fan. I'll buy Hawkeye stuff. I want to wave to the kids. She's on board because she wants. To, she could give two shits about. She doesn't know what Iowa or Purdue <laughs> are, like logos or mascots or anything. Yeah. Just gonna make sure I don't have a high ground show. That's the only thing. And essentially, yeah. it's not the second weekend of the month. Okay. Because there's 30 days in September. So it is the 7th or something like that. So that would be the first real weekend in October. Okay. Looking at it. So okay. usually high ground's like 14, 20 ish or anything. I was going to say it's the second, usually around the second weekend, isn't it? Yeah. For high so, ground. Yeah. So you're going to be. Oh, wow, that works out perfectly. Yeah, it's the 7th, yeah. Saturday 7th. That is probably my favorite college football tradition right now, just because of how the kids. awesome it is. Yeah. And the fact that they did that, the I think they built the hospital to overlook the stadium, if I'm correct, because it's a newer hospital. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they stop and do that, if you guys don't know what the tradition is, end of the first quarter – Everybody in Hawkeye Stadium turns and waves to all the kids. They have an observation floor where they watch the games. Everybody turns and waves to the kids, they and wave just back and, they have and the kids wave I'm back. Right now, and you get I, I'm getting the chills right now with it because it's such a beautiful moment. Bar none, probably the best, probably the most wholesome yes tradition out there in college football right now, and it's more recent one. Man, if you guys make that trip. Yeah. Yeah. Talked about it. And I'm like, this is this is one I I don't care about Iowa. I don't care about Purdue, but it, it, I'm really going to go out, put the black and gold on, get the Hawkeye, probably a sweatshirt and a hat, maybe a hoodie. Well, I mean, a uh, tassel cap, depending. Yeah. Wave it to the kids. Do it. And That's it, fantastic. And it's feasible. My end, it's feasible. I have, she's got vacation. She so has to put in for a Friday so we can do it. Yeah. I don't care if she takes a whole week off. I, I will just spend the money and go. Yeah. Jump in the car. It'll be amazing. And she'll sleep nine and a half of them. So we'll, it's 80 most of the way out. Interstate 80. So. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, it's pretty, it's a straight shot for you guys, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I think for, if I were to try, I think it's probably 90 and then I'd have to pick up 80 at some you point. Just, you drop down probably down. in Chicago. Yeah. I mean, it or, kind of collide a little bit there. I've been there. Well, Do you know even, Mark Hurley's perfect game's coming up, by the way? Oh, it is. Yeah, that is right. Remember I was there? Yeah, I do remember. Get to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I, if you drop down 79, I can pick up 80 and just take 80 out. So. Oh, exactly. yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, so. You should probably drop down 79 and meet us. <sighs> Not a bad. It's tempting. So here's the bad thing, though. I already know October, the first three weekends, absolute crapshoot for me because I know there's two birthdays and there's also two kids' birthdays that I know I'll have to go to for the family and an Apple Fest that I know is lurking in there somewhere. So You're not going. I am not. I will not be able to make that trip, unfortunately. I will FaceTime you, me waving to the kids, though. And then you'll so hang out. I'm going to be so fucking jealous. I'm going to make this happen. All right. Let's get back to Money in the Bank, which Jenks lost. We're going to throw that right off the bat. We were only different on one, and it happened, and it happened amazingly. Well, we're going to start from the get of the show. You're so pissed. The, at get, me. Of the, <laughs> the get of the show. No, it's. I'm not pissed because it's. I knew. Yeah, but you, we didn't know how. We know well, how. I said, I said I'll throw it out the window. Texting you when we were watching it, I said I'll throw it out the window because. Uh, no, but it, you keep it because we didn't know how it would get there. But at the end of the day, that was probably the most brilliant way to do that. I'm poetic. sorry. Yeah. It was poetic. So. 
What? I'm just going to read notes. Do it. Everybody looked at Logan at the beginning of the match and wanted to attack him. I loved it. I loved it. There was a cricket bat there. Uh, it, it's really not called a cricket bat. It's called something else. Do we know what yeah, it is? Yeah, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. But I love the reference. Uh, Ricochet threw the ladder to do the the suicide, like, through the ladder. Dude, there's so many elements that yeah. I, I, you can't practice that. And I will continue to defend as much as I shit on Ricochet. You can't practice that to make it look as good as he does. Like, he is yeah. just that goddamn good. He's that talented. The crowd hated Logan. The frog splash on the ladder, I just, I don't know if they wanted the ladder to break, and it didn't. It just looked like. <laughs> that was painful. Yeah. That priest looked like he had fucking just four ribs shoot out of his back and was done. Ugh. And then as much as I just said Ricochet does Ricochet stuff, they didn't have that table spot set, and both of them almost, you almost saw them die in live pay-per-view or whatever streaming live event or whatever the hell you call it it'll always be a pay-per-view if you don't get it and this is the question i have in this match and you know you want that moment and i'm going to bring up that word again later when we talk about raw do you just have to squash it because that was completely and i'm talking about the ricochet and logan spanish fly, fly. essentially through the two tables neither one of them were ready on those ropes. They just wobbled. They did. It just wasn't connected and everybody saw it. They both lived. Okay. What was that needed? Like that's really putting your health in. Well, I think that's, it goes back to the spot fest. It's too much of an urge to have that special spot. If they would have hit that perfectly. Oh, we'd be, Talking about it for 90 years, like Jeff Hardy getting speared off the ladder by Edge. But it didn't happen. It just didn't come into fruition. It turned into the ladder spot where Jeff tried to cross three ladders and he fell off the ladders. That same match. You know what I mean? It's it's where it's that's why it's high risk. It's high risk, high reward. You either get it or you don't. And I do I think if both guys were more uh, seasoned vets doing that move, would it have worked? Maybe, but those ropes looked really janky at that loose. point. They, they were loose. very loose. And I think it would have, I think it was just one of those things where either just do the spot with the ropes, not add five elements with the ladder and all that, or just take the Bubba dive, Bubba and Matt Hardy dive where you take the ladder over and just fall into the tables. We've seen that so many times, though. I thought that's exactly. what they were setting it up. I thought, oh, we're going to get the Bubba dive. The one, Yeah, and the other thing is, I don't think it would ever work, but it always makes me think, are they going to be crazy enough to try to do a Spanish fly off the ladder at some yes, point? Yes, at some point. At some point, they're going to do that, and at that point, they're both going to get seriously injured because we saw how close call it was with the Spanish fly, but you're doing that from a ladder 15 feet in the air. And essentially if you rotate too early, you're going to break every bone in your chest, back, neck. whatever neck. If you rotate too late, you're going to break every bone. That it's is one of those. And yeah. Yeah. So and it always seems like when it's that table spot, those two tables at the entranceway, nobody hits one of the tables or they never break for some reason, one reason or another. So that spot's always a dangerous one. It is. I put that was not needed. They're fucking idiots. Uh, I love that they teased L.A. Knight. We were not on L.A. Knight. We saw the winner. It's, it's Priest one. You guys know by now we predicted that. But I, they gave us enough tease that, listen, we do this 500, oh, close to 500. You guys are going to get so tired of that. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost 500 episodes. Um, and then it goes to over 500 episodes, by the way. So you're just going to hate us. Or me, at least. That's all right. I like being heel once in a while. I just lost my train of thought. And that's another reason why you love Can't Crushers. Oh, I, 
it, it put that much of a doubt in. I'm like, oh shit, there really are. They're, they're they're going to give it to L.A. Knight for a brief minute. I'm like, well, we both got it wrong. Yeah, <laughs> At least. and we both would have been like, I like that. That's right. fun. I'll take that on the chin. But it's so close. But I love that. I I agree with you. I love that tease of L.A. Knight because I think it needed it. Yeah. Because here's old regime versus new. And I know, guys, you guys probably get really tired of me saying old versus new. But old regime, old regime would have never turned into the audience love that way. They would have just did the squash. Disregarded him. Did, disregarded did the him. Roman Reigns when, yeah. Yes, he got, exactly. Push, push one guy to the moon, leave everybody behind. This regime will tease or play with the crowd response in it. And that brings in engagement from the rest, from the crowd, which I think brings in more interest because now your voice, you're like, Oh my God, did we hear, did they hear us? Are we doing it? Are we, is it going to happen? And then it doesn't happen. But you're like, it was so close, though. They're going to do it at some point. They have to. I it's was, LA that night. Was my question, are they, yeah. does that mean that was LA's test, essentially? That couple minutes in there? Because listen, writing on the wall, they had Priest winning it. Boom, Priest yeah. wins. But when Priest takes the title and we get the turn and da 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 da, are we talking six months to a year maybe we get finn and la night because that's essentially where it could possibly go if yeah. all lines and I'm, that's not a prediction i'm just saying it's something that priest wins it from seth finn and priest go at it for a little bit la night says i i touched a briefcase too you know this this is a, a line that could continue to go is that where LA Knight gets his come up in six months to a year? It could very well be. I think it is close. It's closer than anything. LA Knight's on the verge. And I think they're they're recognizing it. When it in Saudi, I think that's when they really took attention to it because that crowd was all about LA Knight. London, give or take, they're gonna be excited for whatever you give them. They're gonna throw out, they're gonna be there, they're gonna cheer, they're gonna boo. Yeah excited later on in the night they were very excited later on in the night a little bit of pandering going on at the same time but that's a different story but they play into it but when you hear consistently through the u.s you hear it in saudi and you hear it in london it's starting to come into fruition especially when wwe starts reposting old content that somehow happens to have la night included in it right yeah Grocery store ads. Ads. Car, the workout I forgot videos. about the car shield when he was in that one with Ric Flair. The workout video from 2014. Still saying, yeah, to Triple H. And Triple H just giving him a dirty ass look. That's probably one of the reasons he didn't make it in 2014. Right. <laughs> he went there, he went. <laughs> yeah, he, he's there. I, I think nothing against Seth. Seth is always going to be one of your faces. Uh, oh, yeah. If we want to play pillar game, maybe we can do that next week or something like that of of Raw and or SmackDown. But Seth is up there. He doesn't need the title. Him being the first champion, it's noteworthy. It's cool. Is he going to – I don't know if he's going to keep it long. I, I personally – not predicting win yet, but I, I think it's priest to grab. He has it longer than a la Seth started with it. And then we get something down the line. The fracture is still there for Judgment Day, even though they look strong Monday. It's it's a great tease. Listen, the Bloodline storyline, we're jumping all over the fucking place. The Bloodline storyline is coming to an end. So they mm -hmm. need another hot storyline. Is it finally the Judgment Day? We shit on them for two years. They is finally found there? their way. They found their way. Yeah. They have their direction. It's possibly there. I I don't know if it's if that's the guy to take it off of Seth though. But I think I think you're having a valid point. Somebody it, it could be. It could very well be. But I also think that whatever if he does it, it's a test. It's mm -hmm. not a true title reign. 
do. It's it's like when Edge won the first one and cashed it in. Three weeks transitional champion. It was a test to see how he would do. Could he be the heel of the company? He passed with flying colors. That's going to be the thing with Damian Priest. He carried Bad Bunny. Can you carry a rivalry with your team, former teammates, as well as carry the world title and in everything in between? The, yeah. com- the show. Maybe not the company, but the show, the brand. The that show. You- yes, exactly. So overall, I like the match. All, oh, all the spots and everything, good match. It really was. Um, we get the women's tag team title match. I love the fucking Spice Girl theme from Liv. I marked out. I instantly knew she was a Spice Girl. I went crazy. Why the hell did Ronda have an M on her head, though? I was wondering if that was a gaming reference or anime reference. I didn't know. This is up. This is Can Crushers. You guys yeah. got to help us with this. But it was a sticker. It wasn't even painted on. It was a sticker because mm-hmm. it was peeling off halfway through the match. So I don't know. Maybe it's branding. Maybe it's her farm branding because she's been wearing a lot of that branding lately. She has been. Yeah. And we get something that shocked the world. Never saw this coming. No. It never saw Shayna just turning on her. Out. Yeah. Careful to clutch ending, just putting Ronda down. I would have never in a million years thought that was the case because we thought, at least I thought, lengthy title reign. Yeah, I thought eight, ten months, they're going to do a lot of good things. I didn't even think they were going to break up at the end of it. It was just going to be it ran its course and somebody overcame the submission Special. mountain, sp- yeah. submission specialist mountain. No, Shana turned and on Raw gave a very compelling reason why. And I kind of agree with her. And I think we talked about it a little bit, if not. There's no way Shane is the face, the heel in this. No, she's the face. She ter- she turned on Ronda, and that place went ape shit crazy. Ape crazy. They loved it, and I loved it. I loved it. It was the first thing I texted you. I said mm-hmm. they have a Shane a problem now. I think yeah. that's exactly what I said. Yep. They have a Shane a problem because they want her to be the heel. You ca- you can't. People, we are. We've been are sick of Ronda. Yeah. And you've read over the last week or so that her time is really coming up in WWE. She's got a hard date that she's out. She's going to be gone. I think it's SummerSlam. I mean, the date wasn't given to us, but I think we're going to get a blow up of this. She's going to be injured. She's gone until her next go around. To be honest, I think it's she's just done because, I mean, her she'll come back as a legend legend or legend or just a hall of famer at that point she'll get into the hall of fame at this point whether you guys want to debate that or not she's getting in as a hall of famer yeah 100 percent wrestler or celebrity side of it you know whatever but yeah they'll they'll constitute it as a wrestler because at this yeah she she's full-time she has championships she was full-time you know it is what it is but yeah but I well, love new new champs, and I still say there's a directional thing they can do with this. I, I just Raquel still needs to be a badass. We'll get to all agreed. that. Agreed. I see title. First thing I said, I God, I fucking hate Riddle. <laughs> and I completely agreed with you in text message over that. I love the shout out to the honky honky tonk man and Savage. They don't get many shout outs, especially with IC, these IC titles. Yep. They name the list that Miz had it 75 times. Jericho, well, they don't bring up Jericho anymore, but they, you know, they name everybody has had it a, a dozen times. You don't hear honky and Savage. So when they said that, and I'm like, it's about damn time. Me and Lizzo were excited. You, you guys are on the same page. No, nah, but I agree with you because they, it's always been about the quantity, not the quality or length of time they've had the title. Because Honky was special because of the 18 months plus that he had the title. Macho, well, Macho was special in a lot of different ways. But his reign itself, just his just reign itself, day. was fantastic. And the match that took that reign away was even more epic in its own right. So it made sense. 
giving them the special shout out that they deserved that they haven't gotten in God knows how long. It was beautiful. It it was as honestly, I'm pretty sure they haven't mentioned Honky or Randy Savage's IC title reign. Maybe since Santino tried to run the table back in what was that odd eight, odd nine, whatever, and it was a com- comedy act at that point. So give them the just dues. That's what I love about it. We're starting to get that history back in there. We're starting to make it even more important and people can start enjoying the product and understanding the history behind it. The badge itself sucked for me. I I could have cared less because Riddle was in it, but the returning drew. That that was big. That did catch me off guard. I would agree with you on the match. I think it was because I knew we knew Gunther was going to win. And honestly, I was only there for Gunther to just destroy Riddle. I'm going to be fully honest right now. Excuse me. But returning Drew, man. And he hit a Claymore. Yeah. So this is... I'm really liking this a lot. I am too. Because it does... Listen, you've heard us. We, and we'll continue to talk about this. We don't want to go extra, extra, extra long this week. It's long. It's going to be long enough. But Drew's the perfect guy. Yeah. He, he's established this, that, and the other thing. Gunther doesn't lose when he loses the title. He just goes to Seth or Priest or whomever. Exactly. That. He just goes on to the world title picture, and yeah. he's the main event star at that point. Yeah. So does it happen? I don't know. We'll find out when we make predictions, but we'll see what happens. So, But it's on the horizon, and you're right. Drew is the absolute perfect perfect opportunity to get the title off of him i i'm kind of leaning though they'd rather give him the hunter's head on the wall type thing instead of taking the title off of him but we'll see yeah i we're not making predictions today not not making predictions we're stirring the fucking pot today is what we're doing that's what we got to do cody and dom dom was arrested for jaywalking the night before poor bastard He's just gonna. He's getting profiled, is what it is. You know, he really is. Dom's getting profiled. He shouldn't be profiled, especially in London, man. He's. I don't know. I know. I texted this to you because I had to make sure I put it in the notes. The crowd is making this match a bigger match than it is. Mm-hmm. Listen, it wasn't a match. It was the crowd made this match better. Hundred percent agree. But that's the power. I'm not going to say Cody. That's the power of the hate for Dom, it of is. the nuclear hate for Dom. This was nothing to do with Cody. We knew Cody was going to win this. Right. Right, wrong, or indifferent. This is the nuclear global hate that has that Dom Dom has endured. So, do you know what? Dom Dom wrestlers right now. I, I was just going to say that Dom is my fa- one of my favorite wrestlers. Maybe one of my fa- probably one of my favorite heels, yeah, going overall right now, and I'm including AEW, yeah, and that. Well, and he doesn't he doesn't have to speak. There in the heel right now, and we'll and get to know, that. And you know what? Dom doesn't have to speak. Mm-mm. Dom, Dom, half the people are jealous because they're horn balls and want r- mommy in their corner. Third of the people. Third of the people do hate Dominic just because he's a brave son. He's, he's got a punchable face. They're pissed at him. And then a third of the people still think he sucks at wrestling, and they still hate him for that. So it's a whole nuclear kind of just great. Oppenheimer couldn't build a better nuclear bomb. Let's wow. go over there. Let's pull in recent events. It's nearly There's, 500 what, episodes. We never said that. That, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a new movie coming out. But it's serious. Dom just has to look, open his eyes, and people hate him. It. He's yeah. impressive. He's changed my mind since he left Ray. I'm sorry. Again, the match was nothing. The right home about. It's a raw main event match. Yeah. That's what it was. But the crowd and everything behind it made it. Better. Yeah. We get fucking John Cena. Blew my mind. Dude, I was laying down and Cena came out and I fucking jumped off the couch. I was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? (sighs) 
and then to essentially, it's not he, out there, but to essentially say WrestleMania 41 is coming to New England or New England, New coming England, to, <laughs> Boston, coming to England. You can't tease that, right? No, you because not give them 41. Agreed. There's people out there that were saying, oh, they don't have any. They have to get London to approve it. This was a force to handle it. No, this has already been set in stone. London's getting WrestleMania 41. If they're not, I'm, not, I'm dumbfounded because yeah. it, that bomb you just mentioned that I don't can't even say. Today. Yeah, the, the nuclear bomb. How you don't have John Cena come out randomly and tease a WrestleMania to just get the city to force the city's hand. Right. Absolutely. No, no chance. No. London knows if they get WrestleMania, they're pff, everything that whole week. People are going to love it. They're going to be there. They know what that means. But again, we're stirring the pot because what was the first thing I text you? Oh, I know it was two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. It's because AEW selling out Wembley. Well, that was the other thing. I did agree with you on that at that point because I said hey, they're setting all these records. WWE has to basically turn around and say, no, we have to top you in two years, essentially. Yeah. But my my other thing is they're basing it off of now I've been thinking about this. They're basing it off of what's going on in Wembley now. AEW is probably going back to Wembley next year. And they're going to make it an annual series. So you know the records broken this year are going to be even higher next year. So WWE has to figure out how in a year and a half, essentially, they're going to get they make WrestleMania 41, they get 150,000 people stuffed into Wembley Stadium. Because they can't go into the O2. No. It has to be Wembley. If it's not Wembley... You it, didn't beat AEW. You didn't beat AEW, and it doesn't count. Right. It's a pissing contest over in London right now. Oh, that, yeah. is a, that is literally what it is. Which is great for us. Wrestling Completely figures, agree. Yeah. Let I them piss all they want to. Let them piss all they want to. London is a fantastic environment to have pay-per-views. Wales, London, and all of that. Chef's kiss. Let them do it. Let them piss all over the city in a good way. Don't get... Don't take that the wrong way, people. But... <laughs> Let them have their pissing contest because no everybody, every wrestling fan in the world is going to benefit from this being yeah. the case. The, the money that's going to roll into there is and, good for and, them. And then I can't wait for five months later, AEW tops them again. <laughs> no. <laughs> They'll build a bigger, Tony Khan be like, we're building a bigger Wembley for us, please. We're good. We're good. <laughs> we're gonna more money from my dad to build on to Wembley. I say Khan is established in London, is he not? I think I he's think a so. businessman, so yeah, it makes sense. Is he gonna allow? All right, well, is let's he play this card. Allow him if he's that established, and these are all farces right now. But they go down this path with us. If he's that established in London, can he veto it? You can only think... go to the O2. I don't know. I'm just being. But, well, no, that's a great question, though. How much pool does he have in London? Or is it more, I just own these couple teams. Those are my ties. Right. If he owns Wembley, he owns fuck owns Wembley. I don't think so either, but let's play hypothetical because I have no idea. If he owns Wembley, they're not going there. <laughs> your ass, though, too. They don't even try to come here. Yeah. But he does. He probably doesn't own Wembley Stadium. But, um, I gotta look this up now. I have to. I'll look it up in a minute. But I think you bring up an interesting point. Tony Khan's dad, and I cannot pronounce his name, so I'm not even gonna butcher it and try. Shad. Is it Shad? It, oh, short for Shad. Yeah, Shad. Yeah. And I was trying to say his full name. So. Oh yeah, don't. Shad Khan owns the Jaguars, but if he owns several teams in London, he has puts a lot of money into London. Your politicians, I mean, this is the case in America, right. not London, so it could be totally different in London, but your politicians are like, well, you're patting my district with money, so I'm going to tend to lean your way and just agree with what you want. Mm -hmm. It's probably not the case in London, 
But it but, could be. I don't, but it, depending on the society you live in, you right. will let that happen. My society, it's fine because I'm a jackass. I've been called a piece of shit on my own podcast recently. Oh, that's true. You have. <laughs> own podcast. The foreman, Red James, called me a piece of shit. And I still had a conversation with him. Moving on to the women's ladder match. Bailey joined Judgment Day for 30 seconds. Got to get that out there. I love the match. But the beginning... With Vega not being, nobody was on the ladder, and Vega couldn't get the ladder off of her. So I said, how is she even going to set the ladder up? So that yeah. essentially, that first five minutes eliminated Vega of ever winning it because she couldn't lift the ladder off herself when it was on an angle on her and the ring. Yeah. It didn't make any, it, it made absolutely no sense. We know she could have did it. It was just terrible. Terrible, 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 terrible storytelling. But, oh my God. Again, they haven't seen Bailey. So they went, and I'm, I'm giving pops they to the crowd again. Up. They went old school Bailey singing, hey, hey Bailey. Bailey. Ooh, ooh. Ha. I, yeah. I want to know, will you be my girl? Which I... I loved it. I do. You too. have to love that's it. Funny. That's why I still. I don't, we're never gonna get that Bailey back. Yeah. But I wouldn't mind. Trisha's spots. Mm, I did say fuck. This is great. Love the feud fights for a while when there was yeah. some feuds. They gave them all high spots. The ending was epic for me. I love the ending of Bailey and Becky being handcuffed the two horsewomen in this match for the next generation mm-hmm. to essentially step over them. Oh, the, the uh, picture perfect because we were sitting there like, okay, so we started putting the handcuffs on Becky, you know, actually I'm going to stop. I will give Trish your credit for taking some of the spots she did especially on that ladder and shit, 46 years old. She's fucking doing yeah, what she can. Doing that. Um, yeah, I I would never do it at this age, at 35. So her doing it at 46, more power to her. All the appreciation work. But I was wondering what was going to happen with the handcuffs after they're just dangling now on Becky. We're not doing anything with them. Nobody's grasped them. Like, are I they just going to connect it to party where she's going to get attached to a ladder? That's what I thought was going to happen, too, with somebody's going to just snap it on the ladder and then whatnot. EO coming out of nowhere, which after Bailey screwed EO earlier on in the match. So let's talk about that. Bailey throwing EO off the ladder. It basically opened the door for EO to do it. Yeah. And EO took advantage and locked her and Becky together. Beautiful spot. Smart ass spot. Climbed over the generation essentially before her and said, Peace out, I'm better. And I love it. I I I will say this though. In my mind, there is only one title Eos pursuing. It will never be Rhea's. It will always be Asuka's. Yeah. And I'm not giving away predictions, but I dare say. She's taking it off of Asuka. I do, yes. But when and where? I don't know yet. So we'll see what that plays into SummerSlam versus what that plays into down the road and how that all plays in. I think it's a multi-woman match. Because it's already a two people threat. need to be in it. Yeah, it's already a triple threat. But this, that, and the other. Somebody doesn't want... I mean, the downfall... And I'm going to go down this page. Charlotte's not taking the loss because of Charlotte Flair. Bianca is still your woman face. Yeah. They, they have a Bianca problem. Did they yeah. want her bad? But it's just not going to happen. We've talked about that a couple weeks ago. So Oscar loses. Oscar legit takes the loss because you've buried her enough. And I hate to say it because this title run as of right now isn't anything special for her. No. Or 
do they? And maybe she does take the loss, but it's not by the two women already in the match. That's... And we pull a fatal four way to yeah. your point earlier. We take it that one step further and we get a heist of the century at SummerSlam type deal. Because yeah. nobody's cashed in at SummerSlam. Uh, well, Del Rio did, but yeah. Man. Yeah, that's a different. <laughs> that's a different, different animal. Different animal. But I liked it so far. Money in the Bank has been great. Yep. Seth and Finn, listen, you could put these two to fight in a paper bag. I do love their matches. But again, we've seen this. The only thing that I want to talk about is the distraction of Priest coming out. Like, this was, we can talk about the match if you really want to. No, to your point, the match was great, yes. But the focal point was and always will be Priest coming out, distracting Finn. Seth getting the win. Right. That's to your point. That's all this match was about. This was that was all what this match set up. It was yeah. a riff in judgment day. Which is we'll talk about it shortly. Not yeah. Anymore. Then we get the Civil War. Jenks is watching it. He gets the audio. I have a interview to yeah, do. Yeah, you were you were in the podcast at that point. So I have to mute but I'm still watching. No, it was part of the paranormal as well. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, because you texted me. It's part yeah. of the paranormal. Yeah. Yeah. I watched it on mute. And then a couple of days later, I went back and I watched it. I don't want this to end. It's coming to an end. I understand that. It is coming to an end. I feel there's just so much more. And I don't know what, but there's still so much more to be on this corner on the cob that's left, we can ro- rotate it over and get the other side or something. This was fucking amazing. Yeah. And then have Roman take the loss. And then we're going to fast forward to SmackDown here in a hot second. Holy fucking fuck. This was perfect. In every aspect of it. And to your point, every good piece of cinema has to come to an end point at some, at some juncture. But everything in this match, you were talking about Roman taking a loss. Yes, that's the biggest point. I was shocked. I yeah. sat up. We thought it was going to be solo. We thought it was going to be solo. Well, then actually, when we both said Roman was going to win. The well, that's true. We lose. did. Yeah, lose. We thought they were going to. Well, even then, we thought if the loss happens, it's solo. They wouldn't pin, get Roman pinned three and a half years after Corbin did it in 2019, right? So when it happened, I think it was a very surreal feeling where everybody was excited, but to me, I was excited, but also, holy shit, this is like history, and this is how you should have built Roman all along, because this is what you wanted the indestructible Roman Reigns. You did it the wrong way before. You've got it now. And now it's a chef kiss when the final fall f- happens. It's the Undertaker meme. That guy, when he loses. Yeah, just his eyes wide. Yeah. And it's like, what? It's that the armor has been broken. It can happen. And now we're in a phase of when does it happen? When does he take the solo loss? And that's not a pun. But when does he take that solo, that one-on-one loss? I think that's the other part of this corn on the cob now. We had the cinema of Roman's indestructible. Roman can't be beat. Nobody can stop Roman Reigns for three and a half years. Now he can be beat. I think we're going to be playing out a long period of time where Jay's going to try it. He's not going to get it. Jimmy's going to get a shot. He's not going to get it. Maybe Solo gets tired and does the shot because you saw the crack between Solo and Roman in that match where Solo basically told him to suck it the fuck up and get up and start doing something. Don't cry. Get going. There's so many elements now where Roman's going to be is vulnerable. He's open. 
I think it plays back into what we've been saying about Cody and the hard times coming right back to it. But this is the next part of the cinema. Mm -hmm. Roman is vulnerable. How do people beat Roman? This is what's going to keep us salivating for the next six to eight months. Because we're going to be sitting there like, my God, he almost had him that time. Every month, he almost had him. This guy almost had him. This guy almost had him. This guy almost had him. We know it can happen. Faith has been restored. Roman can fall. So when does the Roman Empire fall down? Yes, you'll have to wait and see. I guess we will. It's chef's kiss cinema right now. I still say it's not until WrestleMania. I don't think it is either, and that's what makes it special. It might be not until WrestleMania, but there's going to be so many challenge. There's going to be challengers that pop up, like Jay is going to be the first one, that are going to get so close that people think it's going to happen, but it never Jimmy's does. Jimmy's going to get closer. Jimmy's going to get closer. Let's say Solo's the next one after that. Solo's going to get even closer. Then we're going to have a couple other guys that they've been building up. Let's throw LA Knight in there. LA Knight's going to get in there and he's going to get so close that he can basically lick the title and he's not going to get it. There's going to be these guys that are just coming in that are strong contenders. (laughs) Don't be surprised. I'm going to throw it out there. Priest gets close. Maybe Priest goes to cash in. Let's say Priest loses the cash in, but he's so close because Roman just went through a hell of a fight yeah romans in war games or something and he goes through this fight priest tries to take it from him roman kicks out and does it stops it we're going to get the taste of it it's there so that when Rhodes comes in at wrestlemania 41 in philadelphia winning the rumble again again pretty much roman's going to fall and the entire empire will co- completely be collapsed at that point. It's going to be so sweet. I agreed. We won't touch on Raw and SmackDown essentially f- from the week right after because yeah. I don't want to be a dick. They were really filler shows. They were. This is what happened. This is what happened. You, if you didn't watch this, you did, did, did. Yeah. They carried some storylines, but nothing. We're gonna go to SmackDown. The tribal chief warfare, chief court, whatever the hell it was called. Tribal court, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. The opening, the closing, all of that. I don't know what's going on right now in the house. There's <laughs> dogs and people running down steps. Um, Jimmy being put on the shelf for a while. I loved it. I, I mean, I don't love that he's hurt wrestling. Yeah. But – that gives Jay his way to prove the big spot, though, because we keep bringing up Solo leaving Roman. When he had that necklace, and I'm sure it's not just called a necklace, but that's what it's going to be here on Can Crusher. It's when he had that in his hand. He looked at it. That's your tease. Mm-hmm. If you didn't see the tease during the Money in the Bank match, that that's your tease right there that he felt the power that that neck garb necklace has as tribal chief. Yeah. He wants it now too. He wants it now too. And you noticed in that spot, he didn't hand it to Roman. They got attacked. Roman picked it up. Hey, Solo man. never surrendered it. Solo will never surrender it. It's now. It's like the Lord of the Rings in this thing now. The power of the ring will corrupt you as soon as you touch it. So now he's touched the necklace. It has corrupted. Probably in Solo's mind, Roman has already given it up to Jay, even though it was to obviously low blow him. Roman's willing to just throw away. away, hand it away. So now... Don't be surprised if this starts being a thing. Don't be surprised if the elders start playing into this more and more because they sent Solo. 
and that's that was a big capital note in this. We need to now bring up the uncles and the fathers more. If we don't hear, I don't say that they have to be on screen, but if we don't hear of Atha, of Sika, if we don't get that twinge yet still of, it's not happening. Maybe for a while. I don't know. I'm still on the fence. Of the Rock. Again, once this is all said and done, the Rock doesn't need the title. We can still have that battle. We've talked about it to the cows come home of Roman losing the title, and then we're going to have Rock and Roman mm-hmm. for the overall head of the chief, head of the table thing. It's still there. We just need Michael Cole. Michael Cole, by the way, was God fucking awful. And I hate saying this about an announcer. I just hate it. Oh, it's so loud in here. I can't hear you. Listen, I have been places where it's deafening. Headsets clear that up. He just played the, the whole crowd up. Played it up, up yeah. But he, he just played it up way too much. I got sick of it at Money in the Bank. I digress. We do need to hear more about the dads and the uncles and the rock. And da, 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 da. this needs to. I never like anything a forest fed, but it just needs to be shoved a little bit about the whole elders. I don't think it gets shoved until Solo becomes the the centerpiece of this. So we get through Jimmy, we get or we get through Jay, we get through Jimmy. When Solo becomes that piece, I think that's when the elders become more of a piece. And it's not because they put Solo here; it's because Solo himself. Yes, he's been the enforcer. He's been dominant. He's been great. He hasn't been on the roster long enough. So there's not a lot of backing there where people are like, okay, it's Solo. We don't know a lot about his personality. We don't know his accomplishments. I mean, Jimmy and Jay have been around for 13, 14 years. They've done it all. They've held the tag titles. They've shot, taken their shot at Roman. They've done a lot of different things. So it's believable. Solo just hasn't been around long enough to be that believable besides just being that monster, the enforcer that they have. So I think that's when we start seeing the elders start getting pushed more and more of Rikishi comes in or Afa and Sika. And then I think it quiets down. This I'm playing what could happen just for you, Mark, to get us to the rock. So when we think about it, Solo's when the family starts coming in, but then Roman beats Solo. Okay. The, parent, the uncles, the fa- the fathers, the grandfathers, they all subside. The head of the table is set, but then he loses the title. And then that next week, it's you're not the head of the table anymore. That's when you, the Brahma Bull, yep. that's when you we start playing uh, hell, uh, oh. where he comes out. And it's like, you have disgraced this family. You've done this. You've done that. You've sacrificed. You've manipulated. I think we get a year build to... Well, I already know when this is. When is it? it? It's in Wembley. Yeah, that's exactly where it's going. It's WrestleMania 42. It's in Wembley. 41. No, it's 42. 40. Phil- oh, Philly. Philly's in Philly. Okay, sorry. Philly's in Philly? 41. Yes, it is. Yeah, Philly's in Philly. Sorry, 41. That's exactly where it was going. This is like Cena Rock. You're going to give it a year build, but it's going to be Roman has to build himself back up to get to the mountaintop to face the Rock for the head of the table type thing. And that's where we drop it in Wembley, which makes absolute sense because if you're going to have a global audience, you're going to put the global star dead center in the middle of Wembley to really attract that audience to Wimbley. To get those people. Yeah. I'll sign the rock after I sign Goldberg. Boof. <laughs> so the bloodline still has a ton of meat on the bones to continue and roll with because we just we plan two years right there. In in probably fifteen mm-hmm. minutes. We plan two years. It is amazing. I, I don't want this to end. This has probably been it, we talked about how the bloodline has taken over the horsemen, and this is now the whole bloodline saga 
will be one of my all-time favorite storylines. I think it's already cracked the top two to three for me because yep. it's just been so good for the past three. We'll say since Sami Zayn came on, it really kick started, kicked it in the ass, but it has been a solid developing storyline for many years that you just can't ignore it at this point. Yeah. We'll fast forward a lot of SmackDown and just give you some side notes of things. Sheamus in theory was a fucking banger until oh. Pretty Deadly came out, and then shit went awry. Right. And hey, Austin Theory won by a schoolboy. I mean, were you, you, know. were you excited? Yeah, with tights. Yeah, tights. You know, yeah. the Orange Cassidy won. <sighs> Karrion Cross needs fucking leave. He's no longer believable as a threat. Like, this was a fast match. Yeah, it was very quick. But listen, head elsewhere, dude. He had he had all the momentum after Drew. Mm-hmm. I don't know who he pissed off or what he did, but he lost everything. The Edge Waller match. It was a nice showcase for Waller. Edge wins. I think there's more to come on this, though. I was going to say, this seemed like just the first match in a set because it, it feels like Edge talked down to Waller. So now we need Waller to kind of keep continuing the call out Edge and they need force to a do second. It SummerSlam. Exactly. They force the second match. The Bianca, Asuka, and Charlotte promo before Asuka came out. I really enjoyed that. Like that was a good promo piece by them. Like yeah. it really was like, oh yeah. And then EO comes in and I, I I love the tease. I really I did. Yeah. That it teased and it really cemented in my mind that EO is gunning for Asuka. EO does not care for anybody else in this whole thing. She's coming for Asuka. This is a whole this has been a whole thing between these two for a year and a half now. So the fact that you is building up for that, it was a good chaos. It was good chaos. I agree. The promo promo was on point between the, them before. I want to see where this goes. This it seems too. like it has legs. It seems like the women's division. We have three centerpieces now in SmackDown to kind of level it out and be what does the what does the next week bring? Which right now is bringing a Bianca and Charlotte Flair promo. So shit, yeah, it's hard. Well, maybe during. <laughs> the time, All right, skipping over to Raw. Uh, this was very Judgment Day heavy. They were breaking up. They weren't breaking up. They're together. They stood strong. I mean, I'm going to fast forward all of this. They stood strong right. at the end of the night. At the end of the night, and we'll throw in NXT with that. They stood strong on NXT when they defeated Carmelo Hayes and Kirk Williams. They looked like a dominant team for, and despite the T's cracks, they've looked dominant, which is also telling me that the time is coming even further because we've already teased the break. Now we've patched it with air quotes. They only won because of one reason. And it, yeah, Rhea Ripley. Exactly. Well, that's the only reason they win all the all time. the time. Ten out of ten times, yeah. mommy's the only reason Judgment Day's winning, or seems like a threat. Becky and Zoe, I enjoyed this. I mean, I'm not saying it's a six pack or anything like that. They're slowly putting a rocket up Zoe's ass. I wouldn't be surprised. And get ready. That EO gets it. It's her test. Zoe takes it for her test, and then Becky and or somebody else gets it. I think we get two tests real quick. I think the Raw Women's Championship, once it's off of Asuka, and no disrespect to Asuka because we love her, I think there's going to be some transition to see where it's going to sit. I, I don't think any of the big names are going to get it in six months. I'm not saying I, EO or Zoe are not a big name, but you understand. You at least understand. I know where you're coming from with that. And are you now, wait, are you talking the world title that Rhea has or the WWE title that Asuka has? Asuka. Which, Asuka's one. Okay. 
because you said raw that's why i wanted to clarify with it but um i know it was formally raw but i'm just clarifying so right. um i would agree with that i think zoe has the opportunity here to really break out of her shell and i think that's why they put it with trish because this whole rivalry yeah it was a hall of famer versus becky to kind of lay the foundation for everything but i think it becomes really this was about zoe getting her to the next level and building up that foundation everything that's happened in the past six months is to build the foundation for the next generation of women because Obviously, Trish, she's probably done after SummerSlam. Becky, Charlotte, Bailey, they're going to probably go by the wayside here pretty soon. And not saying that they're going to... They don't need to be around the titles. They don't need to be around the titles. Honestly, they probably might move to more part-time roles where they're just not in the mix. We're trying to lay the ground, the foundation for what the women's division will be for the next five to seven years. That's where we're at right now because we have the crop of talent in NXT. We have the ladies in, in Raw, SmackDown, and all of that. And different, you're going to start seeing those Oscars, those Beckys, those Baileys, those Charlottes start to just go away. They're going to step off to the side, let these younger women go for it and have the titles. And that includes Rhea, who's only. 25 maybe 23 somewhere in that range if ish ish yeah ish is she's so she's still young bianca she's still a younger talent in terms of experience in that so bianca's it's bianca ria we need to see who those other stars that elevate themselves become and right now zoe's looking like that strong woman that strong personality that can do that you know, and we'll play into the EO Skies, who's a t- unique, special talent. She really is. Gener- she is generational. She's a special talent. They're lined up. Everybody's lined up. Let's start cycling them all in. Because I would not be surprised, and I'll say this, if Becky Bailey do not get another title run. Again. I, have, I, I think the writing's on the wall for bailey no disrespect to you yeah. your dog is fucking named after her i know becky but maybe one more but maybe one bailey more it. i really don't i don't i don't either becky i'll agree maybe one more charlotte's getting 16 we know this it's gonna happen at some point from any of the you know maybe she transitions back to Rhea or whatever we'll, yeah you'll get she'll get, the, she'll get that 16th title reign and then that's when she'll be done or she'll get 17, and she's the one that breaks Ric Flair's record instead of Cena. Joey Chestnut's going to beat that next year. Well, that's fair. You know, he's doing he's he's on the right path. But he only need 75 hot dogs. Actually, the way he blows people out of the water, he could do 45 and be fine. I know, but, right? Uh, the fast track again. Drew beats Imperium with Dick Bag there, meaning Riddle. <laughs> I loved. Maxine getting her varsity jacket, but then it was ruined from the, listen, I still cannot buy into the Viking Raiders with Valhalla. It still, it hurts. It does. Because War, there's, there's three great talents. They are. War Raiders, War, War Machine in New Japan, War Raiders in NXT, Chef's Kiss. Loved them. Sarah Logan, and then she was crazy. What, Mary, crazy Mary Dobbins. Yeah. yeah. And Indian. then in the Indies, she was really a great talent. Yeah. She's a very good talent. She was on the riot squad. She was still good there. I think she's just been criminally underused or underutilized in WWE. And now she's Valhalla where they're just trying too much theatrics and they just need to bring it back a bit. Like I'm longing for the days where they're bowling against great profits like that's where I'm at right now. Oh. At least. <laughs> All right. Um, the champ and Miz was great. Add read to it, and I loved it even more. I really did. I don't know why I wasn't expecting Reed to come out though to be a part of the, like. I love it. Don't get me wrong. 
the read aspect to me was just like, ah, shit, man, Miz is going to win it. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe I just wanted Champa to win it to get a signature win. win. You know what I mean? But I understand Reed coming out to make that happen. But, oh, man, I just We're wanted Champa Reed. I'm all right with that. I'd be I'm OK that. with that, too. Yeah. We'll just put on SummerSlam. Let's let's let him cook. Ronda and Shayna's brawl was a brawl. I don't yeah. know anything else to say about that. Logan and Ricochet's face off. Logan says, and this is what pisses me off. Logan says he's not about the moments. That's all he's fucking done when he's been here. I know it was a slap in the face, and I'm sure it's a line that he was told to make people like me get pissed off. But he's like, I'm not about the moments. I think it would have been more better delivered. Not good grammar there, so don't jump on me. But I think it would have been better if Ricochet said that line to Logan Paul. Yeah. Logan Paul said it to Ricochet, and I'm like, dude, that's – he jumped through tables with the prime guy. He had the collision in – because I'm telling you what I remember of Logan Paul. Yeah. He jumped through a table with the prime guy, collision in – air with ricochet okay. almost died and what else can you tell me about logan paul nothing hey let's you forgot one major moment when he dove onto roman and saudi and had the cell phone in his fucking hand oh yeah you're yeah. gonna tell me it, that's it, it, not about the moment yeah i mean great they did what they needed to do because they have us pissed off and talking about it that's true but i i the other flip side of this is that kind of went on a little too long for me. Mm-hmm. They could have summed that up really quick and then had Ricochet do, which is still amazing, don't get me wrong, flying out of the ring and landing on his feet. Oh, yeah. It was amazing when he did it to Velveteen Dream, and it was still amazing when he did it on to Logan Paul. But then again, to also have Logan Paul no-sell it, essentially, after that, right, kind of killed the moment. Yeah. This is going to happen at SummerSlam. It's going to happen at SummerSlam, folks. And it's a spectacle. And that's all it is. Yeah. It's going to be something that we'll talk about. Holy shit, do you see that? Dude? In a year, we'll be like, oh shit, that, yeah, Logan Ricochet fought. Yeah. It, it It's not going to be a match. It's not going to be anything that we're going to salivate over. There's going to be, I think the over-under should be for... Over under four stupid ass spots that are extremely dangerous and they shouldn't have done, but that's what's going to happen. I agree. You have anything else you want to bring up WWE wise? Oh, Sonya and uh, I was going to say man. you didn't even bring <laughs> up your girl. Oh, is that it. what you're going with? Okay. Your girls out here getting a title shot, and you're just letting them wave in the wind here. Did they win it, and this is. Where we get Calum finally? They're not gonna. Ah. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if they won. If they win it, I'll shave my head. Everybody, listen to that. I'm hoping they win it now. They're not gonna win it. It's. Is it gonna happen in SummerSlam? You're gonna have a returning live. Get the title. And then less than a month later, they're going to lose it to I I understand. I'm talking myself into it because you had to get the titles off of Shonda. Shonda. That's the tag team. That's if it tastes. (laughs) You had to get the titles off of Shana and Rhonda so we can send Rhonda on her way by Shana decimating her. Yeah. You have to make Raquel bad. So they have to drop the titles because Liv loses the match. I hope Chelsea gets the fucking win. And, and then you get what we want of mean ass Raquel to get up to real level or somebody to give a challenge at some point. Well, here's the thing. They're not going to do it at SummerSlam because everything's indicating Raquel versus Rhea right now is in the books for the title at SummerSlam. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen the night after SummerSlam. Um, because I'm I'm throwing it out there too. Raquel's pissed off. She didn't win the world title from Rhea. 
it's a perfect storm. Liv loses the match to Chelsea and Sonia. It's a tale as old as time and as old as wrestling. Your partner fucks you over after you've already lost one of the biggest matches of your life. You're going to take her out. It's going to happen. And hair's going to fall on the floor because you're going to shave your head because I of it. I'm, I'm all right with that. It's summer. I would never make that, that <laughs> god-awful prediction or anything like that. But the downfall is it doesn't grow back a lot because I'm all thinking <laughs> I'm 46. But my thought is, get ready. The tag team titles have been decent with Shonda, as I said, <laughs> and in Raquel and Liv, kind of that whole little story there. What are they really going to do once it's, and I love them, once it's on Sonya and Chelsea? They win it. Where the fuck does it go then? Because there's no tag teams again. True. You have Casey and Candice that just trickled up. Which I think that's the team that beat them, but it's not for a while. You've decimated Isla and Fire. Since they lost the NXT titles, they haven't been seen. Yeah. Which was a formidable tag team. They were fucking tag team champions. Yeah. Do we get call-ups and maybe they say, hey, forget that Gigi and Jace, Jace and Jane hate each other. Now they're back together. I don't think they go that far. I hope. I mean, they they did a barbershop window moment. I know. For that, per, for, to keep them apart, to create that moment. I think we see Fire and Dawn, they come back. I, I think you have the makings of the tag team, but they have, as long as they're committed to keeping them together, it'll happen. I just don't know who you call it from NXT and piece together because right now it's kind of I mean, not, not a lot of tag teams running around there. We heard Dakota's healing good. Right. Is she still in with Bailey? So is that kind of could Bailey? We, we just said Bailey's not going to sniff the title. Right. We, we probably mean heavyweight title. Could she get a couple more tag teams? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, She's maybe. calling Sasha Banks and Mercedes Monet every day saying, come back, come back, come back at some point. That's yeah. been noted. Uh, word is, and this is a spoiler for you, Mercedes Monet is going to be on Slammiversary tonight. Mm. On Impact. Mm. Is she just there to see Trinity? Or what the hell's her name there? Her real name's Trinity. It, I think it is Trinity. It there. is Trinity, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're right. Is she just there for moral support for her? How's her leg? Da 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 da. Yeah. Or well, it's been six, eight weeks, right? Yeah. I so mean she should be healed. The door has no, I'm not saying closed. There's a lot going on. We're gonna transition to AEW right now. There's a lot going on elsewhere that she could do a six to eight week run on impact. Yeah, and show up. In in, uh, I mean, show up in London. Uh, you, you know, maybe they don't have a title contender for Chicago. They have somebody for London, and Mercedes Monet walks into London and challenges in Chicago, and just walks away with the title. Could happen. And this is all. A farce. Oh, she's with Impact. She's with Impact. Everybody right. not forget about her. But they think she's in that corner. Right. She's in Florida. She's not not leaving that not living Impact. Yeah. Yeah. Chicago. She comes barreling in. Chicago. All right, let's, let's talk about AEW. Let's take a hot second break and come back because we have a lot of AEW to cover, too. Raw was an hour and 12 minutes. Let's see how long. (laughs) There was a pay-per-view in there. I know. Hey, everybody, this is Gilbert, WWF's longest reigning light heavyweight champion. And you're listening to Kane Crusher's podcast, the best guy 
guys are all out there. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to Kay and Krusty's podcast. I was going to do some. I was going to do AJ Styles. Ain't nobody breaking this redneck, but I want to tie IMDb in it and couldn't figure it out. So we're gonna let it be. Oh, now you're all about IMDb. Well, now now that I remembered it, I got to be all about it. But, but you should be all about Podurama too. I'm about all of it. I'm not discriminating over here. I love it all. But I screwed up. I was trying to make it work. Do you know this? Come on. Listen, it's amateur hour over here. I don't know. You've carried this podcast with me on it for two plus years. So I don't know what you've expected any different. That is lies. (laughs) All right. Collision from last week, AEW from last week. Let's dive into this. And let me tell you. For the matches on Collision, the first Collision was pretty epic. Yeah. And this one picked back up, though. They did. There was one or two that I'm like, eh, this was, this was meat and potatoes here. Punk starting the show to get the Owen chant. Now listen, I didn't tell you right then and there that Punk was going to get his win over Samoa Joe. Because we're going to fast forward right to the main event. We'll, yeah, we'll, might, we'll as well, talk- might as well stick, stick it. Yeah. But if you didn't know that Punk was getting his win over Samoa Joe just by having him come out first, getting him pumped up. But I'll watch that match again and again and again. Yeah. We didn't need. They're slowly getting a little bit of WWE vibe, though, between Kevin Kelly and Nigel. Yeah. I don't need to hear 85 times that this was 18 years in the making. Got it. I got it from the first hour. We didn't need to say it 75 times during the match. Yeah. Separate yourselves a little bit. Little things like that just get under my skin. But the match itself was fucking 18 years in the making. (laughs) And it was worth the wait. Yeah. Yeah, It really was. It was awesome with the wait. I, my heart was warmed because I saw Smo Joe step out of the way from Sam Punk during it and then splat on the mat. I'm secretly loving that the whole time. <laughs> that was, there was a long time between Smo Joe stepping out of the way and him jumping down. I'm like, I know. You couldn't turn around and look. Look to see what he was moving. <laughs> But overall, I, I loved it. I, I loved the yeah. tease that they were going to say at the end that, okay, we're good to go, and then Joe just chokes him out again. Joe's making it feel like he's going to be very much around the finals and very much in Punk's business going forward, as if the TV title for ROH is just not enough to captivate Joe's attention right now. He now has the slow-hanging fruit that – is going to be a chef's kiss where they're, we might be seeing this again and all in all out. All out. Well, yeah, I think yeah. it was one time. This was not a one time shtick. Yeah. No. no. But we said it as soon as the, the tournament came out. This, again, Ricky Starks, man. I, we love him. Punk will get choked out. But he's still going to win the match in the Owen Hart title. We have yeah. to kind of, we're not making like bold predictions that we're putting the six pack on the line or anything like that. But you guys will already know, or actually you won't. You'll be ready to watch it tonight. Um, by the time we talk about it, you'll know something's going to happen. But Punk's still going to win this tournament. It has to be. There's. What do you get out, let me be the dick. What do you get out of this if Starks wins it? I hate so, to say it that way. Here's the problem with it because it's Starks. If this was like Hobbs again, okay. Let me throw this out there though. If Hobbs wins the tournament because Joe chokes out Punk, screws Punk over, Hobbs gets a kick in the ass, right? Because it's a heel thing, heel wins it. Ricky Starks is left basically with like egg on his face because he's like i'm supposed to be a good guy but punk just got tapped out just got choked out so that i could win it but i took advantage of it i didn't really get a win out of it it's always tainted you know what i mean starts doesn't get anything good out of this nothing 
if he beats Punk clean, he gets the world, but he's never he's not going to. No. It's if he beats Punk, it's because Joe. It's because of Joe. And it's tainted. Exactly. Starks Starks is just not in a good place he's with the lose lose in this match. The the only thing that we can say is, hey, you made it to the finals, but Starks is just not he he always has that glass ceiling just cutting him off. Like it's just something's not jiving with it. He shouldn't have made it to the finals. Because we get another fucking turn from Hobbs. I am done with Hobbs. Well, that was my point, was if Hobbs wins that match, right. Starks avoids this whole scenario. Starks is in a, a good place. Right. It also builds in the history between Hobbs and Starks of Starks can't beat Hobbs, so that when it's for like an actual title down the line, and let's say they have both have a title... There's that history is there. Yes, you could call the rubber match, but Hobbs is more believable in the role of being the heel that wins hooker by crook. I mean, I loved that Hobbs came out in the black and pink during his match. It was fantastic tribute. Loved it. But that also signaled to me that he was losing because you got to wear the singlet at least once in the tournament, and if you ain't getting past that match, you might as well wear it during that match, right? What is so, any way, though? Yeah. It's so bad. I mean, I'm glad he's away from the QTV bullshit, especially after that god-awful rap that went out Wednesday night. Oh. But, again, he does he go... This year than Big Show did his whole career. <laughs> Fair. But I also think he's going to go into obscurity again. Like, I he's going to disappear, get... and we're going to get 14 books of Hobbs that get written in that time until he comes back. Right? Like, that's just where the we're at with Hobbs now. Of Hobbs, I'm, the book. I'm sorry, but I want Hobbs running fucking through people. The son of a bitch is talented. He's, he's got better on the fight. His name, for God's sakes, he named the Powerhouse Hobbs. Let him powerhouse his ass through people and be this monster. I'm not going on the monster rant. Woosaw. Oh, because- Woosaw, because we're bringing Lance Archer back to lose in about a week and a half here at some point to and, somebody. And that's what I – no, because we're going to link this all together. Yeah. You're going to get AEW in a fucking nutshell. It might not be a nutshell, but we're just going to be all over the place. We get a goddamn five-minute promo about Lance Archer coming back because, listen, whatever he does in Japan and over there, he is booked differently. I was excited when his name came up that he was going to be in AEW because yeah. I remember the things that he's done. He hasn't done shit over here that I don't give a shit what promo you give me that he's coming back. No disrespect against Trent. He's fighting Trent fucking Beretta. Or he did, compared to when you're listening to this. Good. He's going to get a win over Trent Beretta. Yeah. He's going to get a win, and then he'll fight somebody on Dynamite and get a loss. And then he's gone. The lo- And I'm not being a dick. The loss is going to be Action Andrade is going to beat him, who has been buried, too. It, but... We're going to build him back up now. Oh, let, let's forget about him. Yeah. I, Lar- Larcher. I'm so mad right now. <laughs> Archer has been booked horribly. Horribly. I don't know how you can bring him back to being the monster that you want him to be. I don't know. And I don't care right now. It, it would take six months of him just running through people. Not even sniffing a title. Just running through significant people, not. No, some, it's got to be. I don't. I hate to say this. It's got to be Wardlow when he comes back. It's got to be it, Hobbs. It's got. It be, has to be these big names. It can't be Aaron Solo and Camarado and in a local talent that you beat on Dark Elevation five weeks in a row. It can't be. No. It has to be Hobbs. It has to be Wardlow. It has to be. I'm not even going to say Luchasaurus because he's technically the TNT champion, but it has to be these bigger names, bigger guys that 
it makes sense so that it puts him in that upper echelon of he's a fucking monster. You know, he's back to being a monster. Then I'm believing it. But I don't think that's the case. I'm betting five bucks, Mark, in two to three weeks, he's losing to Hobbs. That's Hobbs' rebound. Is Ar- Archer is going to be here. He's going to dominate maybe this week. Maybe he'll dominate on Dynamite next week. Like it's Chuck and- Taylor. Against, against Chuck Taylor, who needs to get revenge because it's Trent Beretta. And then it's Archer and Hobbs in a week and a half, or in a week after that at Dynamite, and it's Hobbs gets a win and Archer's gone again. So, these monsters, man. they So many monsters, so many big guys. That they could, another one. It, there was another one. He promo about he wants to hurt people like they try to hurt him. Unleash them. Yeah. Let them go. Stop with the promos. Just let them, let them run rickshaw. Everybody, any big guy that's come through there, Keith Lee especially, should have just been... By himself. By himself. He to, was destroyed with Swerve. And I, you know what? If he would have kept with Swerve and joined the Mogul Embassy, that would have been the best thing for him because he would have been... Um, At least the bouncer, the heavy, the he would have been the heavy, the, the bouncer, enforcer, yeah. the big enforcer guy that would have racked up believable wins, and it would have made sense, but they couldn't do it. And even Parker Bodeau, who where I don't even know what the hell he is right now, and they already sent the other one packing before he even had a match. So, uh, you, you just wonder. I, you just wonder. Um, I did love, I love, love, love the House of Black promo, a la right in, a la Sons, maybe, right into the Andrade answering him about what the mask meant and everything. We're getting what we want. Mm-hmm. And we are. And it's building up nice and slow. We're going to get it right at all in, all out, and it's going to be beautiful. Julia got a nice win over local talent, Bambi Hall. Uh, she's I, I didn't know this. She's got like 28 wins in a row now. Like, holy yeah, Christ. I didn't realize she was over 20 wins until they said that. And I'm like, oh, shit, she's on and a tear right now. Back to her elevation and dark I, and everything. I would say the biggest name she had on there was the Anna J feud. She beat Anna J a couple of times during that streak. So outside of that, yeah, it's definitely elevation. I mean, that's maybe a TBS title shot here at some point i don't think she gets it but i think it's a title shot at some point yeah and maybe i'll spin it the other way maybe she does to give the house of black a a title to make at least that faction still tough because do do they still have the they have the trio title still so they would be dripping in gold Yeah, uh, she's not going to get that. Yeah, if she gets that title, they're dripping in gold, and that's not what they – I don't think that's what they want. No, no. But I don't know if they're going to have it long either. I mean, they they might – they could lose it in the next month or so, but who else do you have as a six – as a three – a trio? A dynamite – you already brought it up. Is is Death Triangle a thing anymore? Yeah, are they? They're not because Pac joined the BCC. Even though it's only for this match, that's the Lucha Brothers are in ROH. We have not seen them in AEW since they went to ROH, which is fine. They're the tag champs. Stay there, right? But Pac's back for blood and guts, and is that it? Like yeah. where? I don't know though because he leaves. Well, you know what? No. It will be it in a month and a half because he was probably going to be showcased on All Out in Wembley. Yeah, because and then he's, he's it's, there. It, it, yeah, and then he can just stay there after that pay per view. So yeah, first month again, and then come back. Then he went back. Yeah. Did you like the FTR Bullet Club match? Did you not? I loved it. I, I wanted to see. I no. I I. I okay. I thought, Great. I I thought I was walking into something here where I'm like, oh, I wasn't prepared for this debate. I loved it. I want more of it. We're getting more of it. We're going to get more of it. But I also have a complaint about it because I think it should be on Battle of the Belts. I do, too. 
I think it should be the There's only half. one belt match on the Battle of the Belts, I think, Exactly. Right? Yes, it's only the TNT title. I think this would be the perfect 45, 30, 45 minute but remainder of the time. Three. So it's going to, it's got to go. It's going 30 at least. Yeah. So it's two out of three falls. I think it should be on Battle of the Belts, but they're going to squish it on Collision in between the Owen Hart stuff, probably. I think that's a dumb move. I think you put this on Battle of the Belts, and finally, we have a Battle of the Belts that's worth watching. I'm going to be honest, guys. We haven't had that in the other I'm seven iterations. For the Lucha match, huh? Well, he's got, he's beating Sean Spears. I mean, the chairman's not going to win this match. He can't. They just took away his weapon. They banned his chair shot to the head. And he's only wrestling, and you know, he said he's only wrestling because it's in Canada. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, he's. Cassie's going to come back to wrestling soon. Yeah. He's staying home. He's content. He'll wrestle every once in a while. He'll do stuff in Canada. To see him daily, weekly, I mean, whatever, you're not going to see Sean Spears that much anymore. No. He's going to, he will stay home, which he's perfectly fine to. Run his wrestling school. Good for him. Good for him. Enjoy it. He doesn't have to worry about Shawn Michaels kicking him in the middle of hallways anymore or anything like that. So, I mean, I don't blame him one bit. No. We're ripping through last week's collision, <laughs> by the way. I did like the uh, – we, we talked about the, the Hobbs-Stark match, the, the Starks one and everything. Before QT and all that baloney, this was Good. another banger for these two. It was. And it was, it was the match – I wanted them to have when Hobbs destroyed Starks in six minutes. Yes. This is the match I wanted them to have, and this was fantastic. So we know they can have the chemistry, and we know they can do it. So now it just makes me think, who did Starks piss off six, eight months ago to have a six-minute loss? I digress. I think this this was a great match. It was fantastic. If it wasn't on the same show as FTR and the Bullet Club and Punk and Joe. Would have been a better match. It would have been a better match. It would have been the main event. But you can't compete with two Leg- legends and then two tag teams that are just on top of their fucking game. Jay White finally showed something to me. Juice. I, you took the words right out of my mouth. This was their best showing it, it's probably because yeah. of, of, the, FDR. of who they were in the ring with. Yeah. Yeah. Do we get new champions? I'm starting to think that. And maybe that's what they want us to think. But I also don't know. Because I feel like they're not the tag champs of that Bullet Club now. Because over the past two weeks, it was official. The right. guns are Bullet Club Gold, which, fuck yeah. I yeah. mean, it makes sense, and they needed it. Also, their names are guns, so they fit right in with the Bullet Club. I, I, I never ahead of expected. I'm, yeah, I'm ahead of you, and I'm going to ruin it for you. I didn't think I'd see Bailey and EO walk out together again. Oh, I had the LWO come up on my screen. I don't know what's going on. You're a minute behind then or so. Oh, yeah, because Zelina's still in the ring. She's dancing on the corner. Yeah, I'm about a minute behind. Yeah, I, I definitely I, – I, maybe I missed something last week. Well, they the have – Covered, but the week I, prior when we took a week off that Bailey and EO shook hands and kissed and they're fine. Well, even on Instagram, Bailey played it up that they were fine. So I I saw that, so. Okay. Your Bailey or Bailey Bailey? Uh, Bailey Bailey. Oh, okay. My, you know, my Bailey has been on the shelf since her tag team partner left. You know, she's she's got to rest up. A little bit sore muscles here. Right. Oh, and by the way, on Collision, Scorpio Sky defeated Ash and Andrade. Uh, welcome back, Scorpio Sky. Well, <laughs> as well. well yeah. Not seen anywhere. Good luck. Good luck on, Dino, on Dark. Yeah, it's not even around anymore. Yeah. So we, get, we get to Dynamite. And we talked about the band moved, uh, uh, band moves, essentially, in the first episode, in the first segment of the show. Holy shit, Mark. We're two hours in. Get your shit together. 
We're on IMDb though. <laughs> <That's probably laughs> what we are since when? <laughs> so we get Jericho and Commander. Uh, his band moves. We're fine. <laughs> uh, Commander's the exception. He's not all elite, is he? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. I love the callback, and, and people are like, who the hell's Bad News Allen? That's Bad News Brown, essentially. They just can't say yeah. Bad News Brown. When he was shit-canned from WWF at the time, and his indie name was Bad News Allen. Uh, if you saw the promo and you wanted to know, that's who it is. Um, I love this reference back. I really do. Yeah. And I think it's about time. I mean, me and fucking Lizzo again. Uh, I think it's about time that Jericho is not the head of something. And it, I think I'm ready for this. I agree with that. It's because he's not the focal point of the show anymore. He can step back and play the legend role and more of a group. And with it being callous, that makes it infinitely more dastardly, dastardly, intriguing, probably going to generate a lot of hate, which is going to be good. I think this is going to be a really excellent, I'm not saying this is evolution here, guys, but Jericho is going to play the role of Ric Flair here where he is going to be that legendary figure mentoring Takeshita, because we know Takeshita is already in there. We're going to start seeing these pieces start falling into place. I'm interested who the next two, I think there's two more to get added, but I don't know who that would be yet. Is it a tag team? Is it a, we have two up and comers that we want to bring forth? I don't know who it is yet. I kind of want to see, and this is going to sound controversial, or maybe not, maybe Ricky Starks might get a fresh new start being in a group with Callis, Jericho, and Dikeshka in his own right. I've seen heel Ricky in the NWA. Like, heel Ricky really has not been heel Ricky in AEW, even when it yeah. was Taz and everything. He was still yeah. showman. He did some stupid ass shit, mean wise, and not. We're not talking like Roddy Piper or anything. Right. Like that. To Ricky's ways, he was a bit of a dick in NWA when he had the TV title before he lost it to Zicky and all that. He was doing some cool stuff, and that's what put him on the radar there for me. You could multiply that by a million being with Callus then, and I'd yeah. love to see that. That's a great point. I think it. It's that situation. This is the perfect situation to bring this out of guys who are kind of big names, but they're just floating. Stuck. They're stuck. They're wander. They're just stuck in their own wheels. Callus gets you. It, Callus has the last name of a callus on a horse's ass. That's he's gonna get you there. It, he'll get you what you need him to get you. So I like it a lot. The downfall is when Jericho joins, his first freaking match is going to be a Hager. I it is because he gave the hat back, though. So I'm, I'm, I was I, sad about that. I was sad about it, too. It didn't generate tears, though. I almost wanted it to be Hager challenge Jericho to a match. And then they forcibly take the hat off of Hager and kind of like stomp on it. That's how you, I don't know. That's how it was for me. But. This is a writing on the wall that Hager's gone then. Because what else is so. going to do with him? I think, I think this is just Hager's. This was Hager's opportunity to leave. And this was a good way to say goodbye. They just let him go off into the sunset. It doesn't need to be anything special. It doesn't need to be a rivalry. He was already only wrestling part time anyway. So it was a good, good little way to let him, let him go. Right. Get ready because Hellfire and Brimstone is going to happen in this house in a minute. Two, one. Well, maybe not that <laughs> quick. Oh uh, my god, it's fire! No, I'm just kidding. But how about Blue Cane? Oh, Blue Cane, yeah. You know, with the snow coming down, and then his Twitter gets fucking taken down, and Matt I mean, Cardona's yeah. work. Matt Cardona's working wonders <laughs> over there. Blue Cane, guard dog. <laughs> Eating crow right now. 
as I was wondering how Jack Perry and Hook was going to be a feud. I'm enjoying the running and jumping in and out of cars and being doom hiding in the car and attacking. Yeah. I still don't think the title of the FTW title for Jack Perry is really going to do anything, but this is fun to watch. It's it's nice little fun segment going back and forth. I just, how do you get him away from the car to make it that much sweeter? Is it, we're not touching, we're just playing Keystone Cops here until the match actually happens, which is fine. But at that point, to me, Jungle Boy should just line with Christian because it seems like right up Christian's alley. We're young Christian, dip, do- dip, duck, dodge, dodge, duck, whatever the hell it, five D's of dodgeball are. We're just fucking doing this right now. And this just has young Christian with the, that terrible singlet and the fucking pants going, running around. But he just left them. I know, but it's... I, it makes sense. I'm not knocking it's, it. it. It's embracing... He's embracing what he wanted from him, right? Yep. Honestly, if they rejoined, it's not lazy yeah. storytelling. It's a thing of actual kind of beauty because he's like, now that you've embraced this, let's do it again. And then you have Luchasaurus, you have Jungle, you have Jack Perry back together. It's not going to be the same. It's going to be something it's going to be something that they desperately needed. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, they can't. Their face run. Luchasaurus won. I don't think is ever a face. He he just looked menacing. You know, there's yeah. people that just never should have been a face. Jack can play both. I'm liking so far this dickhead Jack. I really am. I am, too. Listen, I'm going to skip... My favorite thing of the week. And we'll get to it, baby. That's your little <laughs> hint. Um, Orange Cassidy, Darby against Sammy and Garcia. Uh, we haven't talked about Sammy and Garcia. They're essentially a real tag team. At one point, they're in the JAS. So how can it be that they were just randomly fucking picked? And this you was... never got your time to go off on it. So that's I... why during the pot. I appreciate that because I was going to say this is what I wanted to go off on two weeks ago and we never did it. The Blind Eliminator Tournament has half the teams that have teamed before and half the teams that have not. And the half the teams that have not are fucking great pairings. I mean, you got MJF, uh, Adam Cole, fucking Cage and Big Bill. Holy shit, that's a team that right. I love. But then you have guys like Swerve and Keith Lee, which I, I'll give that pass to because they had broken up. They were mortal enemies. Okay, they brought them back together. Whatever. That that makes a little bit of drama. Right. I could have seen them winning a match just because they were a team chemistry. at one point. The chemistry, it just happens. But then we throw Sammy and Garcia together, which – They're, they're in a, a fucking, fucking faction. faction. They're in the JAS. What the fuck are you doing? Orange Cassidy and Darby Allen have been teaming together for the past six fucking months. That's not a that's not a blind eliminator. That's not a blind draw. That's paying somebody off and saying this is my best friend. I'd like to p- play tag with him right now. Yeah, but there was no point to that. Like, it's like they gave up halfway through and they're like, "Oh, we just got to extend some storylines here, so we're gonna just throw these guys together to make it kind of fucking work." If you switch two people, you put. Sammy and Darby together and and then Orange and Garcia. Yeah. I believe that, that it was blind. I would love that. Absolutely love that. That's a blind fucking pull. I mean, Matt Hardy and Jeff, Jeff Carrot, that was a fantastic pull. It right. two legends. Is legends one they should probably two, ride into the sunset together. So yeah, but two legends, it worked. It was a blind pull. But ev- this these two, Swerve and Keith Lee, come on, guys. That, that just got lazy halfway through, like, oh, whoa. Oh, we ran out of teams. Fuck, we ran out of teams. Action Andrade's not ready yet. Let's throw Sammy and Garcia back together. If they would have thrown Action and Orange Cassidy together, perfect. 
Right. And here's why. Here's why. Once Action and Jay's running all over the field ring, or Cassidy's playing this slot, just whatever, play laissez fair, just kind of what you know, whatnot. That's a that's a fucking great team. Let's make that happen. This blind eliminate. We know it's MJF and Adam Cole. Unless, and, and my thoughts are, listen, if one night we get tag team champions, are we getting new champions a week later? That's the other thing. Is it? Well, let's bring that up. Let's go down that route. Okay, Bullet Club Gold gets the tag titles here from FTR. Okay, it's a heel team with the tag titles. MJF and Adam Cole get that big pop. Your hottest fucking team right now. I, I don't give two it's, shit. It's you. them. Yeah. It's them. FTR is, I don't want to say cooled off. They're champs. They're always awesome. They're, yeah. But they've cooled off. Now the acclaimed is, is gone. Gone. Basically, they've been doing trios matches. They're fighting with QTV now. Whatever. And like you said, that amazing rap. And that fucking rap, that whatever the hell that was. But it's down to it's MJF and Adam Cole, baby. People are cheering for a double clothesline to win a fucking match. Right. That's how over this. We knew that was going to be the end game of this blind eliminator was these two together. And it made sense, and they were going to get tag title shots. Just make it more believable next time. Give me eight different teams that are just absolutely. Give me one. Give me Big Bill and a local talent in every city. That's a blind eliminator. Big Bill does most of the (laughs) the local talent just gets squashed. Big Bill comes in with the hot tag. He gets him to the finals. Fantastic. That would be something, but they just fucking got lazy with half, with three of the teams, and I don't know why. So go down that path. Yeah. Let's say the Bullet Club defeats FTR, gets the titles. Mm -hmm. They're a notable team. Yeah. So it saves FTR, not that FTR needs saved, but it saves FTR. They're out of this shtick now. They can go on and do whatever they want with somebody else. Maybe they head to ROH for a little bit. I don't know. Whatever. The sad thing is I'm putting putting FTR on the shelf for a minute. Yeah. Now you're going to have the Bullet Club against Adam and MJF. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Why wouldn't you have them win the titles? They can defend a couple times, lose back to... FTR, lose them back to FTR, get screwed over at that one or something like that. And then that, after they lose the tag team titles, MJF gets pissed off. Listen, this is your one of, I don't know which one, all out, all in. And what, it's one of them. Like, yeah. They could lose the titles at all out or whatever the hell one's in London and then fight each other the next week in Chicago for the titles. Right. That, there it is. Well, yeah. Exactly. You know, MJF is the one turning on Adam. I Oh, hundred percent. There's no you cannot convince me that when Adam Cole said I was gonna turn on you, Max, that it was gonna be Adam Cole that was gonna be the one turning on him. Right. I love everything they've done with this though. I was so this good. was just this whole fucking tournament was for these two. And I and wanna know amazing. which one of them pitched it. That's that's the million dollar question. Is it well, because it's not the typical you're my hero storyline like they did with Punk. It was MJF, Punk was his hero, but he turned his back on him, yada, yada, yada. No, this is Adam Cole, you're my hero, and now we can be together and kind of be – Play video I games. Can, play I've video games. A multiplayer game. game. I, I haven't had any friends. Died. <laughs> you're telling me. How old is he? 20 something. So we're going to probably say what, PlayStation 2, roughly? Yeah, something like that. He has not played a video game with anybody <laughs> since PlayStation 2. Hey, you know what? I get it. I what get it. Donald did I, play a video game with that, him. I haven't played a video game with somebody since. <laughs> that. 
everything. Last week, and I know we haven't really touched on it, but the birthday celebration, there's a cake. You knew. You yeah, knew. They, yeah. Somebody and MGF has been the punchline of this whole thing. We hate. We have to get him to be hated again, right? Yeah. Yeah. So how else do you do that without him turning? He's got to turn on Adam Cole at the end of this. And maybe he turns on him next week during the finals. It's just. <sighs> no possible way during. But they're winning this. If he's going to turn well, on him, it's during the, the that's fair. Match. In the title, maybe, maybe they try, they're trying their hardest or, well, here's the other thing, Mark. The pinnacle tie-ins with FTR, they never officially, like, they sided with Wardlow, but they never, like, had a falling out with MJF either. So maybe MJF plays a conflicted card here with it. I mean, he's already tried to call in sick against Big Bill and Brian Cage, so. I know. <laughs> so prior they went to the bar yeah the women and Adam was like I really like Brit he but, said it like a a 6th uh, grader going on his first date by the way like, you know Brit, Brit and I are really close I really like Brit <laughs> we're, we're going to go to teams in motion and I'm going to hold her hips and dance to uh, every pose has a song and then we're going to go stand on the opposite sides of the uh cafeteria for the whole rest of the dance. Yeah, and have Roddy go over, go tell Brent I like her. Yeah. Roddy runs over. <laughs> I, I, I'm fucking enamored by this. It is so... It, when I say stupid, I mean stupid good. I I, I didn't think I was going to... I'm like, ah, oh, this is just going to be whatever... Uh, Mankind Rock and Sock Connection or Shawn Michaels and this or Daniel Bryan and Kane or, you know, like a fourth. This has been so st- – this is the humor that I like, folks. This has been so stupid that I'm like, <laughs> every week, every week. Every week it catches you. And it, the fucking entrances I are know. fucking oh. – <sighs> So Ruby against Sky Blue. Listen, I think we all wanted Sky Blue to win, to get her, uh, like, a little rub or come up into everything, but... It's just not going to happen. No. No. Our prediction, essentially, is Ruby Ruby takes it. Willow gets her big win over Athena, setting up probably an ROH Mm -hmm. title match. Which I think she could possibly get from Athena down the line, but it's not anytime soon, but... Right. It's going to set up that title match. We'll see what happens, but yeah, this has Ruby written all over it. Yeah. Um, what did you think of Nick Wayne and Swerve? Nick Wayne, he he had a great debut match, but I think I want to see I need to see more out of him because I he's a prodigy. I heard he, I heard he had a great match with Osprey. Right. Swerve and him have done this before, so it was the safe option to put him against Swerve. It also furthers what seems to be Darby and Swerve storyline going forward. I don't know. I'll also say this. Not a fan of his jumping cutter because everybody's got a springboard cutter now. Yeah. I, I'm i glad he didn't get the win. With yeah. Swerve screwing Darby over, I thought, well, this is the way Nick's going to get his first win. And it's going to be like, "Mm, how can I be vested into him? I'm still not vested into him, so to speak. But he just took a loss. Okay. I did like, however, they've basically written him out of of TV right now with that arm spot. So I think that was... Excellent. They gave him the his first match after he just turned 18, gave him the platform. They did it. They threw the wrestling prodigy out there two days after he turns 18. Now it's, okay, bring it back. You're all elite now. You can do whatever you need to do, but we have you written out again. Maybe we see him in the Casino Battle Royal. Yeah. Like I, they, we're not building him up to anything yet, but You'll see him pop on and off for a little bit. He's going to pop in and out very much. So 
don't be surprised if we just start showing up on ROH or just somewhere, somehow, just kind of playing it. Rampage against Bob Local. Local, yeah. It could be that, too. You know, Bob Local on Rampage. It could be something. Just picking up small wins here and there. But, yeah. I mean, it was it was a good showcase for him. I liked it. But at the same time, again, they needed Swerve to get a victory. So his rivalry with Darby Allen is believable, essentially. Back to the Adam Cole um, match. The Adam Cole, MJF, Big Bill, and that body slam, by the way. (laughs) That body slam, and if I don't say it, I'm going to be pissed at myself, was bigger than Andre and Hogan (laughs) and Lex and Yoko. That was so much. It did so much more than wrestling than you know. It would have been better if I did it during the spot, but yeah, I still got it in. That's... (laughs) I appreciate that. I did. It, it got a bigger pop. I think it got a bigger pop than the Silver Dome. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> then we find out, because we already talked about Lance Archer, we find out who the fifth man is for each side. Callus comes out, calls Kenny Coward, da, 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 he comes out, Kenny gets his ass beat by the BCC, Pac hits him in the chair. I was shocked that it was Pac. And I know I we made too. references. I was really shocked that it was Pac. I thought we were going across seas again for somebody on both sides. And we yeah. do clearly on the other side. But I thought, all right, he's going to bring in somebody else. And I, I don't know. Somebody that we've seen before, but it was just going to be like, oh, my God, he's joining the BCC for tonight. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Your point, I think that triangle's done. And I think Pac is, when he floats in and out, is BCC. I think he's very much BCC, or hey, we could be surprised, and he's Don Callis is oh, well, a surprise yeah. member too, or one of the two. But I, I completely agree. Death Triangle is done; it's over with. They've moved away from it. So Pac now is just coming in and out and piecing things. He'll show up when he needs to, show go away when he needs to, that type of thing. I think it was a smart play to bring in Pac for blood and guts. I think that's a unique twist to it because I would have never seen this coming. Like you, I never saw Pac, never even thought Pac was a possibility at that point. I but, honestly didn't think we were going to get him until Wembley again. Yeah, like as a surprise, just kind of how you do or Attacking just knock somebody. somebody out. Yep, exactly. And then come over for the month after to do, you know, all in over there, all out over here. Your grand slam, and, and yeah. Go back oh. over for a couple months, and then, yeah. Yeah. We'll see. And then Kenny's getting his ass beat. da 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 Obushi? Golden lovers. What? For getting them. I was shocked. Yeah. Like, I feel like I shouldn't have been shocked, but I was shocked. Because I get what's the, is a, isn't Obushi, wasn't he on the shelf? Wasn't Thought. he injured? I thought. I think that's where my shot comes from. It's like, I thought he was injured and oh, hell of a first match back if it's from, if coming back it, from injury. Yeah, he, yeah. He's clearly not in America yet, by the way. Yeah. He's, he's probably flying in Wednesday or <laughs> Tuesday night or something like that. Yeah. I'll take I, it. I was wondering who they were going to get. I thought we were going to, and I'm going to say generic picks. I thought we were going to get generic picks of Hey, I don't know, somebody. I, I don't know, but I, I thought they were both going to be kind of the linger the forbidden door storyline one more time. I, this, this breaks the storyline of forbidden door. Well, like I thought for the elite, uh, maybe we'll get uh, Eddie again, just kind of, even though they hate each other, he'd go to war just to get Claudio one last time. You know what I mean? Right. Or... For the BCC, they could have picked Umino, could have still been lingering around in the U.S., and they just brought him back and said, uh, you're in this now. Although him high-fiving fans probably lost him that right. So, probably did. You're you supposed know, it, to be the bad guy. <laughs> you're supposed to be the bad guy. Get the hell out of the crowd. But, I mean, it just depends on what they were trying to do, but two great picks. This is going to be 
Next week, I mean, I, I'm done for this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to figure out who's jumping off the cage, though, because somebody's doing a cage spot. I have, I have to imagine it's one of the Jacksons. It has to be. I don't know which one, but... I don't I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I don't know. I'm playing it through my head. I'm just trying to figure out how the fuck they're going to do it. And... As long as there's not a big fucking pillow down there like when Jericho fell. And, <laughs> there's, there's and, they, and they showed it. Was yeah. the other worst thing. Look at this camera angle. Camera angle. Gonna, <laughs> see that pillow? He's going to fall under that. I understand. I do. This next week of wrestling that starts today for you guys it carries over to when we come back closer to episode 500. <laughs> um, <laughs> that might be the 500th time you've mentioned 500. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, it's going to be really good. Like I really, I think AEW is really bringing it this week. We shit on battle of the belts and it deserves to be rampage could be, but collision I think is going to be really good. Like I'm yeah. thoroughly, it's going to be ruined for me, though. Like, I, I have to post stuff. I have to see stuff. I'm going to know before I watch any match. Yeah. Because of the internet and everything. But I can't be... Can't crush your wrestling podcast on Facebook. Da, 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 da. Can't be dead for a week until I watch these. We're on IMDb now. We have to be on top of things. We are. You're... <laughs> Right, we are. So I'm going to know all results before I watch it, but I'm super excited to watch the Punk Starks match. Listen, yeah. we, we, we predicted. I'm gonna Let's do a little prediction. So we're both taking Punk and we're both, yeah. both taking Ruby, right? Yeah. Essentially. Yep. What about tag champs? Your heart of hearts, what do you think? I'll go FTR. I, 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 don't, don't, think, I don't think. I don't think. It's on line. I think it's too tempting to do Adam Cole, MJF versus FTR. I think that's temptation right now. Bullet Club Gold, they're fine, but that's not the tag team of that. This was, and, and we both kind of hinted around this. This was both of their coming out matches. Like yes. we we said this probably a month ago. Jay White has not been Jay White here in AEW. We really didn't think he's done anything. Juice has been a lackey. Juice looked great in that match against them. It's two out of three. You would imagine Cheap first, or me, I don't know. However, FTR first, and then Cheap second, or something like that. DQ first, yeah. then second, yeah, something like that. FTR is going to be, I, I think it's going bullet first, and then FTR is on their heels that they have to win to. They do. And the money is really, really, because everybody will be uh, FTR against Adam. I think by the time we come next week, I think, I think we have new tag champs. I really think they're going to, because I, I think it sells. Adam and MJF. That'll be fun for a little bit. They can do sticks. They can do. Listen, they're going to defend against. I, I know Fuego's not there anymore, but I'm saying the likes of. Because MJF yeah. pull his clout. Chaos Club, or Kip Sabian and me, and or Lee Moriarty and you. you they're going to yeah. defend that for the month. Then when they have to take on real competition because FTR is going to battle back or whoever is the big to do, yeah. they want to put the titles on. That's where they struggle. Who takes the loss? I would imagine it's Adam that takes the loss. MJF turns on him, sets up for all in out loud, da 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 da, da like we've already said. This is a great story to go, and it's fun. It can still be this comedy shtick that they have going on. This has probably one been one of the better comedy shticks they had. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But it's the talent involved too. I think also I think I'm gonna take it as Adam or MJF is going to screw over Adam Cole. Or they don't win the tag titles, they fall short and 
MJF's going to attack Adam Cole at that point. This only works as long as you're winning for MJF. And if you don't win for MJF, then you're not worthwhile. So I think they, I think Adam Cole could take a loss or somebody gets a bump and it's accidental contact or whatever it is. I just, I, I'd love to see him have the tag titles for a hot minute, but I, I just don't feel like in the gut of guts that that's going to happen. They don't need them. They don't. They don't. The month-long banter can carry – when the hell is Wembley? Uh, end of August, because it's back-to-back. So 26th or 27th, and then the following weekend's all in. Okay, so – Or whatever the Chicago one is. Right. So that gives us a month long of banter and then MJF running because Cole wants his shot at the title. That's why he's actually partnered with some. Yeah. So we're going to get amazing promos and then never, they don't have to touch in that month. No. Maybe backstage brawl or what something stupid. Yeah. Either way, we both have MJF turning on Adam. I wouldn't mind them. I don't even fucking care if it's a week that they have the titles. Just that shock. And it's not shock because we're telling you it's going to happen. But just that shock is that the best friends, the real best friends now, have won the title. They're going to shock the system with that title win. Ooh, do we – does Roddy play into this? How I think Kyle? Roddy's got to play into it somehow because Roddy is already – Roddy came back up to Adam Cole to – this past week and was telling him, be careful, don't do this. It was generic white guy that we laughed about. about. He got his ass beat, and now he shows up and says, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Now he's a generic white guy friend, and he's trying to tell Adam Cole not to do it. So he's going to be the generic white guy that I told you so, friend, after this all blows up in Adam Cole's face. And then we're going to get, I know I shouldn't have done it, and MJF's going to attack Roddy at some point. And make it, it's going to be Roddy versus MJF at some point this that next month as well. I think that's going to be a dynamite or a collision type match somehow. Roddy is MJF's new lackey. You think so? Not to him. Because uh-huh. I've not been listening to him, is my thought. Uh, it could be. Is it Roddy that screws over Adam Cole at all in? I don't The thoughts are plenty. They're, the predictions they're, they're, are not they're floating. Here yet. They are floating around. I love you. I love you too. This has been great. I'm so glad we're back after our uh, vacation. I'm excited for what I have to do this week. You can you go build more houses. I, you know what? I think I'm going to retire from that for a hot minute. This weekend, I'm going to hang out with the girlfriend first time seeing her since she's been back so we're gonna hang out and then coming week there's things going on so just gotta ride the waves that's all you can do hopefully the patch comes through on uh fight forever and i can get owen hart i started another road to the elite or leap show or where the hell it's called the, the storyline i finally created somebody oh yeah i can't remember the name Less, <laughs> less something. I don't know. It's very generic. I just wanted to see if you did something. And it's completely different. Yeah. Like I oh, with the creative guy. Yeah. Well, it's not completely different. Like I didn't win the brass ring on purpose. Yeah. And then it sent me down a different path. So I'm enjoying it. Well, I didn't win it at all, so I'm down that different path right now with Miro, so that's just where we're at. Oh, I so. well, I wanted to win everything when I played with Kenny Omega, so I played it on easy. I crushed it all. I don't know what happened. I, I don't know what happened in that casino battle royal, but I lost it somehow, and I was pissed. I won every other one outside of Rose of the Elite. That one, lost it. No idea. I don't know what the hell happened. The patch. You're waiting for the patch. It's the patch, yeah. Miro's Miro screwed me over. All right, you can listen to us on IMDb. You can listen to us on Podjorama. Make sure you sign up for that. Uh, right now, you get fifty percent off the lifetime membership. You know, click the link in our website or the show notes or anything like that. 
That's really cool. It's probably the best promotion you're going to get on Podurama. 50% off is fucking amazing. That's a fucking great deal. Yeah. So if you want to be part of that, get part of that. Thank you, first and foremost, Can't Crush Your Nation, because we made a mockery of – I made a mockery. He is not. I've made a mockery about 500 coming up. I'm really happy about that. Made a mockery about being on IMDb. Podorama right reaching out to us and being part of all of that now being linked essentially with the bigs. This wouldn't have happened without you, Can't Crush Your Nation. Otherwise, Agreed. I'm just talking to friends and it's just us talking. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. You'll get more of this on number 500, which is close. Yes. As of right now, September 16th, in the case anything happens. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for letting us talk to you. Let me talk at you. And we did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, just because you're trash. Holy shit, I haven't said this in two weeks. I forgot. Are you good on that? What is going on over there? Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. You're garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Make sure you tell your loved ones that you love them. Because you never know. <laughs>